Sharp Gym on the campus of Houston Baptist University in Houston. Tonight, it's time for HBU Husky Basketball. Welcome into the broadcast, everyone. I'm Lonnie King, joined by Jeff Power. And we're pleased to bring you the action tonight of a game between the HBU Huskies and the Pepperdine Waves out of the West Coast Conference. And Jeff, this is a, a game that's going to be a very good test for the Huskies tonight. They're off to a three and one start on the season, but everyone surrounding the team thinks they could be playing a little bit better. Yeah, no doubt about it. They got a chance to go out to Hawaii and see what they could do out there. They hung 10 and played pretty well out there, but they come home, they get a victory. And tonight, I think they're trying to look for their star player, Art Bernardi, to step up. Conference Player of the Week has done a nice job so far this season, averaging about 18 points a game, seven rebounds a contest. He'll be key for them, but they're taking on a Pepperdine team that just beat Washington State. Yes, a Pac-10 opponent, and in fact, now Pac-12. That's a, a school that they uh, they beat a Pac-12 opponent last year, also Arizona State. So watch out for Pepperdine. Pepperdine is a, is a team that's got some talent. They're very athletic. The coaches have talked about that and then shared that with their team. So it's not a team that you can come in here and assume that on your home floor you're going to dominate. Well, first thing you need to know, these two teams almost have the most identical uniforms you'll ever <laughs> see. They're both that orange and blue. But the one thing you'll watch for Pepperdine, they do play good defense. They've got great guard play. Uh, watch out for Lauren Davis. He's a guy that can really get it done from the outside. He's already scored uh, 41 points this season. And uh, this team, I think, is uh, better than their one and two record indicates. Now, in addition to Art Bernardi for the Huskies, if you haven't followed us all season long, you need to know that they're going to be looking for leadership from Marcus Davis on the floor as well. He's a guy that's very athletic. Yeah, Marcus Davis, extremely athletic. And this is a, an HBU team that likes to run. They've got good guard play as well. Most teams all across the country now like to spread the floor and play pretty fast. But uh, this HBU team is exciting. They're a lot of fun. They also play great defense. It should be a good matchup. Should be. It's the first time these two teams have ever met in the history of the two schools. And so they'll be going at it here in just a few moments. But first, when we come back, we're going to have a visit with head coach Ron Cottrell of the HBU Huskies. And then Jeff will spend a moment with an eye on the opponent visiting with Judd Kinney, one of the assistants for the Huskies as well. All of that leading up to our tip-off tonight in just a few moments. And you're watching it right here on the Legacy Sports Network. Say after trying Raising Cane's premium, fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers, served with extra long crinkle cut fries, made fresh daily cane sauce, and grilled Texas toast, they say, where have you been all my life? To which our chicken fingers don't reply because, well, chicken fingers can't talk. Raising Cane's, one love. Lone Star College opens doors for nearly 50,000 students. And we're ready to open doors for you, too. Register now on campus or online. Huskies pregame report continues. We're joined by the head coach of the HBU Huskies. Ron Cottrell stops by for a visit. Coach, a uh, win the other night against Dallas Christian, but after that game, you mentioned there was still a little work to do. Yeah, there's no doubt we did not play up to our capabilities, and we we showed a little bit of uh, the jet lag coming back from the Hawaii trip, uh, but we were able to kind of gut it up in the end and do the things we need to do to get the win, uh, although it wasn't the prettiest thing in the world. Well, and, and you've had contributions from both your veterans and the freshmen as well early in the season. Yeah, and we knew going into the season we were going to need a lot of those guys to step up. We need the veterans to be leaders on the court to really help our freshmen grow quickly because we need those freshmen to step in and play right away. Uh, and and uh, quite a few of the freshmen to play quite a, way, quite a bit is the issue is we're not just asking one or two, we're asking for four or five of those guys to really play major roles for us. And I noticed that of those freshmen, you've got seven new faces on the roster this year. I think six have seen time and combined they're averaging about 20 points a game. Yeah, and you know, it's a different guy on, on every night. And so you never know going into the game who particularly is going to step up on that night. Uh, so we're kind of rotating them in, giving them minutes as we can. And, uh, and letting them kind of grow and see who's, who's, who's hot that night, to be honest with you. Well, Art Bernardi has stepped up. At, he, he struggled a little bit in the opener out in Hawaii, but he stepped up since in three good games in a row. Yeah, he's the guy that we know we have to have show up uh, almost every night for us to have a successful uh, outing. 
And then we need to have, you know, Tyler Russell and, and Marcus Davis also step for us as well. And as long as, you know, two of those three step up on a given night, I think we're okay. Well, tonight you go up against Pepperdine and a pretty good challenge here right before the Thanksgiving holiday uh, from a team coming in from the West Coast. Yeah, there's no doubt. This is a very, very good ball club stepping into Sharp tonight. We're going to have to move to the next level for our team to really uh, have some success tonight. They're going to challenge us defensively. Uh, they're going to run a lot of sets. We're going to have to defend really well. And then we've got to play physical. We've got to box out and we've got to go get the ball. Uh, and then we've got to be really mentally strong in our offense to be able to get the shots that we want to get. What would you like to, uh, obviously a win, of course, but what would you like to see accomplished tonight as you progress here with this young team in the season? Well, this team has got to continue to grow. We, we, we're three and one, but we're very fortunate to be three and one right now. I don't think we're anywhere near where we need to be, uh, but I think our guys understand what, what it's going to take, and we just got to continue to see growth every night we step on the floor. We have a good crowd tonight, I hope, and, and I think it's going to be a great night for us to, to make, take that next step in the growth process. All right, we'll see how it goes in just a few moments. When we come back, we'll have our eye on the opponent, a visit with assistant coach Judd Kinney when Huskies pregame report continues. Nestled in the comfort of the Texas Gulf Coast, Deer Park, Texas continues to prove while the birthplace of Texas is on everyone's mind. Voted best affordable suburb by the Bloomberg Business Week, Deer Park is home to many businesses and continues to grow in population and industry. With its close proximity to the Houston Ship Channel, Deer Park is home to many industrial leaders like Dow and Shell. Voted in the top 10 most affordable places to live by CNN Money, Deer Park lures many new residents year-round. These residents enjoy the comforts of many retail outlets, recreational locations, and historic sites like the Battleship Texas and San Jacinto Monument. And with a recognized school district that boasts award-winning athletic, culinary, and journalism programs, Deer Park continues to gain the attention of people nationwide. Come see what everyone's talking about and make your next visit to Texas a rebirthing experience in the birthplace of Texas. Don't worry, boots and jeans are optional. Work, stay, play, explore. That's Deer Park, Texas, uniquely you. Hey, welcome back to the Houston Baptist University pregame show. I'm Jeff Power. We're now joined by Judd Kenny, the assistant coach here for HBU and this is the segment we call the eye on the opponent let's talk a little bit about Pepperdine uh, they're coming off a big win over Washington State yeah I think you know a win like that over a Pac-10 opponent for a West Coast Conference school is always big but I think it really shows you how the talent disparity is not what it used to be in college basketball these guys are a lot more familiar with each other there's not that same fear factor in the name anymore as there might have been 10 years ago with the way these guys see each other all throughout the summer and in, in the club ball and things of that nature uh, one of their key players, Lauren Jackson, 41 points already this season. Give me your thoughts about him. Lauren's an extremely talented guard. He's a guy who can score the ball at all three levels. He shoots it really well. He can get to the basket. He's got a great little mid-range game. Uh, he's a senior. He's been through some battles with this team, and he's a guy who just knows how to win. How about Jordan Baker? He's also got 41 points. Jordan's another extremely talented guard. Only a sophomore, but put up good numbers for him last year as a freshman. Jordan was a highly recruited guy, a great pickup for Pepperdine. And he's a guy that if we're not careful, he can go off. He's shooting nine for 15 on the year from three. And he's very capable of shooting that every night if you don't guard him. HBU off to a great start so far this season. You just got back from Hawaii. Did you get a chance to hang 10 over there? Not as much as I would have liked, but uh, it was a great trip for our young guys and for our families. You know, we got a chance to really bond and grow closer as a group. You know, being that far away from home and the different uh, the different times of the games, playing an 11 p.m. game on ESPN, getting under the bright lights a little bit was a lot of fun for those guys. Very good. Houston Baptist and Pepperdine. It's coming up next. We'll have the starting lineups and much more when we return. Our innermost desire is the force that inspires us to find outright delight. With any size icy cold Coca-Cola, soft drink, or sweet tea for just a dollar. Big dog. Listen, son, your 20s, gosh, they could be such a magical time. Wait, why? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <sighs> hey, Kevin. Keisha, you made my car insurance super easy to understand. What are they talking about? They're kicking you. What? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there with a walk-in closet. But I just graduated. A dojo. Oh! So gross. I'll help you pack. Agents make insurance easier. Get to a better state. State. Banking, but better. Shell Federal Credit Union. Perfect credit, not required. Shell Federal Credit Union. No matter where you work or live in Harris County, you're welcome here with full service banking. More for you at Shell FCU. Banking, but better. 
Retail Federal Credit Union. Here's a crazy idea. What if your bank actually paid you for using your debit card? Let's say 10 cents for every $10 or more debit card purchase. How amazing would that be? We call it Cash Back Counts Checking from Community Bank. A free debit card that pays you to use it. Even he's smiling at that. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas. Bank where you live. How about an ale? Bigger. No, no, no. Bigger still. Ah. It's good to be king. This fall, experience king-size dining, shopping, merriment, and more at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Discount tickets are on sale now at Randall's, Walgreens, Wood Forest National Bank, and online at texrenfest.com. The Texas Renaissance Festival. Choose your own adventure. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Hey, thanks for the VIP treatment, Care. Thanks for saving me all that money on my car insurance, Robert. That's State Farm's discount double check. We dig through your policy, find any hidden savings. That's funny. Before every home game, I used to do an Ivy double check. Really? Yeah, people drop all kinds of stuff in here. Old cell phone, French horn. Andre Dawson? What year is it? Let State Farm find your hidden savings with a discount double check. Caught it! Woo! Get to a better state. State Farm. Back at Sharp Gym, just about set for tonight's opening tip-off. Starting lineups are about to be introduced to the fans here in the arena tonight. Let's take a minute and introduce them to you. All right, first for uh, HPU, Marcel Smith. Where's number two? He's a guard, averaging four to eight, three-point field goals per contest, or four of eight, I should say. How about Tyler Russell, also a guard, wearing number three? Marcus Davis, number 32, plays both guard and forward. Dawson Womack, number 22, is a forward out of Milwaukee, Minnesota. And Art Bernardi, where's number four? The forward, having himself a great season so far. He's out of Brazil. As for Pepperdine, Lauren Jackson is, uh, Caleb Will Willis is uh, at out of Stockbridge, Georgia, in the starting lineup tonight, as is Lauren Jackson, the 6'2", 205 pounds. And also Jordan Baker, Jordan Baker, 6'4", 190 pounds. And Stacy Davis, 6'4", 235. And rounding out the starting lineup for Pepperdine, Jet Reigns out of, you guessed it, Coppell, Texas, 6'7", 200 pounds. That name sounds familiar. Jet, of course, playing right here in the Lone Star State. There's also another Texas-born player on this team, Atif Russell uh, out of Katy, Texas, and he is a freshman and could see some uh, playing time as well. Yeah, both freshmen out of the Texas uh, area. Atif Russell went to Seven Lakes High School, played for Dan Miller out there, and as you mentioned, Jet Reigns out of Capel. And, and we talked to uh, Roger Horn, their SID, before the game tonight, and he mentioned that the coaches for Pepperdine like to come here and scout the Texas area and recruit the Texas area. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity to come in here where the weather is nice and a chance to stop by in the holiday season. A lot of these high school players are off this week, so they can come over here, take a look at not only Pepperdine, but HPU and see what they like and, and find out if this place fits for them. And one of their assistant coaches, uh, Bryant Moore, has some uh, unique ties to the Texas, uh, to the Lone Star State. Yeah, I played at uh, Texas Tech University and uh, has done a nice job of recruiting the area here in the state of Texas. He's a 93 graduate at Texas Tech and Bryant Moore uh, visited with us earlier tonight. He's really excited about being back here in the Lone Star State. Played for Coach Dickey at Texas Tech and of course Coach Dickey is at U of H now and 
Uh, Bryant Moore told us that they spent the weekend at the Texas Invitational in Pasadena together. Hey, there you go. That's a great recruiting opportunity right there. Some of the best high school talent all across the state. I think Legacy Sports Network brought you that basketball as well. Absolutely. Well, we're just about set. The lineups have been introduced to the arena here tonight. A pretty good crowd for a Tuesday night right before Thanksgiving. And we want to make sure we wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Hope you're ready to celebrate the holiday in fine fashion this weekend. Huskies taking on Pepperdine tonight in their final game before the Turkey Day festivities begin on Thursday. They'll be off to uh, the uh, Southern Illinois area this weekend, headed out to uh, Charleston, Illinois to play Eastern Illinois on Saturday afternoon in their next contest. Yeah, chance to uh, to go up and, and this time of year teams are crisscrossing all over the country. As you know, HBU just got back from Hawaii and what a trip. You got a chance to go out there and hang 10. Did you have some fun as well? Yeah, I did. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it was a great amount of fun. And, and I heard Judd Kenny telling you before the game tonight a, a great bonding experience and you could see that among this team. Uh, and if you've got especially like HBU does seven new faces on the squad this year. That's a, a great time to get them all together for a lot uh, long stretches of time. And it was a great bonding experience, I think, for this team. Dawson Womack's going to jump center. He's going to go up against the Texan. Jet Reigns will jump center for Pepperdine in the road orange. And we are underway. Pepperdine controls the opening tip. And they'll move right to left here in the first half. Bring it up the floor in the corner. Stacy Davis has it. Check it, Jordan Baker gets it out top to Stacy Davis. Now Scowen gets the start tonight. Scowen in the starting lineup, and the jumper won't go as we do not see Lorne Jackson in the lineup tonight. Quick runner up the floor is stolen away and back the other way, Pepperdine. Scowen gets it down low, left side to Davis. Turn around with the little hook, won't go, and Marcus Davis with the board. Quite a few Davises on the floor tonight. We'll keep you uh, updated on both Stacy Davis, who's having a fine season with Pepperdine, who was errant on that last shot. And of course, Marcus Davis here at HBU. Marcus finds Art Bernardi in the paint. The little 14-foot rainbow drops down through. And fitting that Art Bernardi is first on the board tonight. Two to nothing Huskies. Out top, Willis leaves it for Baker. Baker back down to Willis in the, on the baseline. Dribbles through the paint, kicks it out for Scout, and he's going to pull up and pop from just inside the free throw line, and he gets his shot to go. Yeah, Nicholas Scowen getting a chance to start. He's out of uh, Bergen, Norway, and uh, making the most of his opportunity, one for one from the floor. Looking across the way for Lauren Jackson. He is suited up tonight, but not in the lineup, and there's an answer underneath for Tyler Russell, and Russell gets his first bucket. Yeah, Tyler Russell averaging 11 points per game and also a team leading 12 assists. Normally he likes to dish that one off, but uh, kept it for himself that time. Good choice. And I think the coaches are happy to see him be a little more aggressive toward the basket. And there's a turnover. It's going to be a foul called on Jet Reigns away from the basketball. Pepperdine will get the ball back into the hands of the Huskies. Sometimes point guards will elect not to shoot, and eventually you sag off them defensively if you think they're not going to take the shot that often. So you got to keep your, your opponent honest. Marcus Davis picked up by Baker. Davis dribbles down right side, and he gets the shot to go. Now there's going to be a big boost for the Huskies if Davis gets off tonight. Yeah, Marcus Davis also averaging 11.3 points per game, and he's really tall. You see how high he can get up in the air with that shot. Also averages 4.5 rebounds per contest. 6-2 lead, 17 and a half minutes to go. Reigns in low, Davis. Davis turn around off the glass, won't go, but Reigns with the tip up and in. Yeah, nice job by Reigns right there to tip that one back in. And uh, he was open underneath, Reigns out of Coppell, Texas. We talked about that Texas connection. Of course, Coppell located up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And here comes Lauren Jackson. Lojack, they like to call him. That's a good nickname, huh? Yeah. You got to thank your parents for naming you Lauren Jackson. <laughs> Probably just, long before they knew what a Lojack was. Yeah, it just sounds like he can stop and pop, huh? <laughs> 
Huskies basketball. Russell's going to inbound the ball. Looks for help. Still holding it. Got to get it in, and he does to Marcel Smith out top. Picked up by Caleb Willis out there. Man-to-man -man defense by Pepperdine this trip up the floor. Davis, backside pass to Womack. Back to Davis, almost lost, but Bernardi saves it. Tried to feed Marcus down low, and it's going to be stolen away by the other Davis. That is... Stacy Davis and a foul on Marcus. I see Bernardi kind of shaking his head right there. I think he felt like maybe he should have gone ahead and taken that shot. He tried to work it inside, couldn't quite get it in there, and a missed opportunity for HBU. Willis will bring it up on Marcel Smith. Man to man defense, and now they're double teaming the ball as Bernardi. Cuts to the paint, and the shot is missed. Rebounded by Dawson Womack, and he leaves it off for Marcel Smith. Smith down low blocks to Bernardi. Turn around, short, won't go. And Davis, Stacy Davis, with the rebound. You're right, we're going to have to make sure we're clear on which Davis has the ball. Baker in the corner on the baseline to Jet Rain. And he gets his first bucket of the night. Yeah, no second. Yeah, Jet Rains, he likes that shot from the baseline. And that's Jet with two T's, not two F's. Don't see that name too often, but hey, I, you know, that sounds like he's got some speed, too. Yeah, he sounds like he ought to be real fast. Marcel Smith turn around, leaves it backside for Davis. Davis will dribble down. Marcus from the baseline won't go, and the rebound is tipped and controlled by Stacy Davis for Pepperdine. Jackson hurries it up the floor. Now he backs it out. Goes out top to Willis. They're going to set up in the half court. Bernardi comes out on Jackson, and that seems like a bit of a defensive mismatch for HBU, but the shot is missed, and it goes out of bounds and brings us to our first stoppage in play. All tied up, 6-6. HBU and Pepperdine, you're watching it right here on the Legacy Sports Network. Football returns to Reliance Stadium as the Big 12 faces off against the Big 10 at the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas, Friday, December 28th. Bring your family and friends to experience the passion, pageantry, and football tradition that can only be seen in the Lone Star State. For more information, go online to Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas.com or call 832-667-2390. We'll see you in December for a football celebration as big as Texas. Cheddar, bacon, onion. Yeah, it's uh, it's three Mendes. <laughs> three Mendes. Three Mendes. Say hello to McDonald's new three Mendes. CBO smooth cheddar, crispy bacon, grilled onions on the Angus Third Pounder or premium chicken sandwiches. CBO, the simple joy of three Mendes. Yeah. Huskies have shot very well from the field early in this game. Three of five, 60%. Yeah, and on the other hand, Pepperdine has not shot too well early on. Three of eight, just 37.5%. But all the points so far in the paint, at least, well, four of the six for each team inside the key. Husky basketball as we come back to action here, 15 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Marcel Smith on the dribble out beyond the arc. Looks for help. Womack comes out, tries to set a pick. They work it around the top of the arc. Russell almost lost it, but Smith saves it out top. Gets it to Marcus. Marcus back outside to Russell. Russell looks to dribble inside, leaves it on the baseline for Bernardi, and he gets it to go off the glass for two. Nice job by Bernardi right there, going up strong. Sometimes you want to give it a little extra push, knowing you might get fouled or the ball might get uh, blocked. Does a nice job of putting it in. And that time it was the right move for Russell to make the dish to him. Have to Willis willing to give it up. Stolen away by HBU. Back the other way they come. In a hurry, Russell takes it down. Kick it out. Womack's going to put up a shot and gets it off the iron and down through. Yeah, Dawson Womack had the friendly roll right there. Trying to raise that average up from three points a game, and that's a friendly roll. That helps. He's just a freshman and has started all five of his collegiate games so far in his career. Here's Jet Rains from the 
key, and he gets it to go down through. Nice smooth stroke on that jumper. Yeah, Reigns has been the hot shooter so far for Pepperdine. Got a couple baskets now from the outside. Womack with his back to the basket, look for help, but he's going to pop from way outside, won't go. And the rebound is ripped off the board by Mariba De Freitas, who's checked in. In a hurry the other way. Shot won't go. May have been partially blocked and back the other way. Here come the Huskies up ahead to Bernardi for two. Yeah, what great transition right there. You see that a lot. When you get a block, you've got to turn it into points going the other way. Bernardi, nice job getting down the floor and be ready for the pass and lays it in for an easy two. Reigns has it, leaves it for Willis. Willis looks for DeFreitas, who's checked in. Bojack goes to Willis. Willis looks for help and gets a pick from Reigns. Stops out at the top of the circle. DeFreitas underneath. Lost control of it, but Davis in his zeal to try and save it actually got it on the baseline, and it'll stay in possession of Pepperdine. Yeah, anytime you can get a block like you saw right there, it's good to try to sprint down the floor. But what you don't always see is a guy like Bernardi sprinting all the way down and, and turning around and making a big play. He's a big guy, showed his speed, and got two points for HBU. Willis gets it inbound to Baker. Baker, quick trigger jumper, won't go in the rebound outlet up ahead to Russell. Russell can't save it, though. And back the other way come the waves. Russell. Out in the corner, goes to Baker, and now they'll hold it up as Jackson will hold it up way out top, right side angle. Baker kicks it outside to Atif Russell, the freshman out of Seven Lakes High School, who plays for Pepperdine. He's checked in, he's got it left side. Out top, it's gonna be a long distance three, and that's put up by Baker. Jordan Baker with the three. Yeah, he's now got 44 points on the season. He's been one of their top scorers. Quick answer from Tyler Russell, strong to the hole. He's already got four in the ball game, and he'll go to the line for the plus one. Yeah, good move right there by Tyler Russell as he heads over to the charity stripe to make it a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Both teams answering each other's runs. So far, it's been... Uh, Jet Reigns, who's done a nice job from the outside with six points for Pepperdine, but I like what I'm seeing in HBU, the way they're running up and down the floor. And there's the free throw. It's up and good. That takes it out to a four-point lead for HBU. 15 to 11 is our score. Good crowd here tonight at Sharp Gym. Willis walks it up, no pressure on him as he brings it across the timeline. New backcourt in for the Huskies. John Evans, number 35, is checked in along with Anthony Hill, the son of former Dallas Cowboy Tony Hill. Baker, long distance jumper, rattles around the iron, won't go, and the rebound is tipped and controlled by Jonathan Evans. Evans will bring it up the floor and pull it up, left side angle, way out top, and he'll set up the half court offense. Cody Joyce has also checked in, number 42 for HBU, and he sets up in the low blocks. Davis back cross court to Hill, to Evans, back to Hill underneath, under the basket, and he was double teamed, swatted away, but it'll stay in possession of the Huskies. After the break, we've got a timeout on the floor. The Huskies with a four point lead, 15 to 11, 11.51 to go in the first half. Take the break. You're watching HBU Huskies basketball on the Legacy Sports Network. say after trying Raising Cane's premium, fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers, served with extra long crinkle cut fries, made fresh daily cane sauce, and grilled Texas toast, they say, where have you been all my life? To which our chicken fingers don't reply because, well, chicken fingers can't talk. Raising Cane's, 
One love. Huskies, the second home game of the year, have a four-point lead here, just under 12 minutes to go in this one. Yeah, Anthony Hill will be headed to the free throw line. He actually led HBU in three-pointers made with 38 in the 2011-2012 season. So he'll head over to, well, actually, they're going to inbound the ball from the corner, from, uh, actually underneath the basket. Talked about the trip to Hawaii, and one of the things you get an opportunity to learn on a trip like that is some of the nicknames that these guys have from their teammates, and Anthony is affectionately called Ant Hill. So <laughs> that's good. That is pretty good. Here's Cody <laughs> Joyce underneath, and the freshman from Churchton, Maryland, kisses the glass and drops it down through 17-11 HBU. Yeah, some players coming off the bench, getting a chance to see what they can do. Cody Joyce, nice job. Baker's going to pop from the left wing. Won't go, but he created contact. Good job by Baker to sell that one, and Evans is going to pick up the personal. Yeah, that's one of those calls where it's kind of tough to decide whether or not that's a that's a touch foul or not. It's pretty, it's pretty close. Yeah, Evans was coming over, definitely got underneath him, but nice lean of the body by Baker to accentuate the foul, and he gets the first free throw. One more to come. This Baker. is a Pepperdine team that. Um, Coming into the season one and two, you're thinking, okay, you know, who, how, how well have they really played? Well, Cal Lutheran, then Cal State Northridge, and then California. Uh, the, the Cal State Northridge and California games were losses, and then they beat Washington State in overtime, 58-56 at home. So, see how they bounce back so far here, coming off that big victory. Baker got both free throws, two for two from the line. Evans has the basketball for the Huskies. They lead by four on the baseline. Bernardi, they're playing out around the perimeter. Hill's got it, bounces it out top to Marcus, Marcus to Evans, Evans in the corner to Bernardi. He's gonna take it strong to the hole, dishes outside for a three from Hill. Too strong off the iron and the rebound off to Stacy Davis for Pep. I'd like to see Bernardi take that shot right there. You're gonna go that close to the paint, go ahead and put it up. I think the coaches would agree with you there. Here's a shot put up. Rebound fall for a couple of Huskies hit the deck, but it's controlled by Pepperdine and on the way to the hole, there's an offensive foul. Yeah, charging gonna be called. Nice job on the defensive side of the floor there by Cody Joyce. That's what you need to do, plant the feet. As you can see, he gets the feet planted, no question about it. Stayed on his toes, nice job keeping the toes down. The minute you let those toes come up off the ground, they're gonna call you for the foul. Joyce now will inbound the ball. James Harper, a freshman out of Arizona. Phoenix area has checked in. Keep an eye on him if you haven't seen Huskies basketball yet this season. Harper has a great looking stroke from the three point line. Evans has the basketball right now. Harper wears number five and he's got the basketball. Left angle looks for help, finds Evans out top. Back to Harper, he thought about a three. They'll swing it around to Tyler Russell, who also checked back in during the timeout. Bernardi wants a basketball, and he's going to be called for a travel. Move the pivot foot before he put the ball on the floor, and it gives the ball right back over to Pepperdine. They trail by four, a couple of possessions up and down the floor for either team without a bucket. Lauren Jackson back on the floor here for Pepperdine, their leading scorer. He's a senior out of Simi Valley. Missed a lot of time last year with injuries for them, and they're understandably glad to have him back. Also checking in for Pepperdine is Austin Mills. He's got the basketball. They get it down in the low blocks, feed it down low to Mariba DeFreitas, and he cuts the lead down to two. DeFreitas out of Trinidad. Nice job getting good possession down low and position and backs his way in for two. Bernardi with the basketball on the baseline, back out top. Harper's got it, picked up by Jackson, finds Bernardi, down low again. Out on the perimeter, they swing the ball around the arc, find Joyce, he had the shot partially blocked, but he's fouled as well, and the freshman will go to the line. 
Phillips just checking out the uh, the sleeve there that James Harper is wearing at number five over there. You see him. It's uh, that's that's the shooter's touch when you got the sleeve going on. Only on one side though, you know. <laughs> Keep that Keep it shooting warm. elbow warm, right? It's a little chilly in here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it should cater to us old guys. Joyce hits his first free throw. Cody Joyce has played so far on the season in three of the first four games for the Huskies. That, though, was his first free throw of the season, and he makes good on it. One more to come. Second one rattles off. One of two that time, and it's a three-point lead for HBU. Mills brings it up, picked up by Evans. Across the timeline they come and leaves it for Jackson. Back to Mills, down low to Davis. Davis picked up by Bernardi. Husky's in a tough man-to-man. -man. Now Joy switches and goes back and picks up DeFreitas, who kicks it out to Jackson. On the baseline to Tief Russell, and he wow. moves through traffic and gets it to go up and in with the right hand. Yeah, Teeth Russell out of KD, seven lakes. Nice move all the way in. Hey, take what the defense will give you. He goes all the way up for an easy two. Down to a one-point lead for HBU. Now here's Bernardi, strong to the hole, follows his own shot and gets it to go. Yeah, Bernardi, nice job of getting the offensive rebound. Stick with it. You know better than anyone when you release it whether or not it's going to go in or not. You might as well be ready for it. Mills to Russell, Russell to Freitas, and oh, almost a steal, nice. Bernardi does steal it. Up to Russell, Russell on the move off the glass for two. Fantastic job on the defensive side by Bernardi, dishes it off quickly, and there to put it in is Tyler Russell. Great transition there for HBU. He doesn't strike you as having a lot of quickness, and there's a travel, a turnover by Pepperdine. But our Bernardi, we uh, talking about Bernardi, he doesn't look physically like he'd be a real quick guy, but he's surprisingly deceptive with his speed. And he's very agile, too. He, yeah. The way he moves up and down the floor, plays great defense. He got that ball dished off rather quickly to Russell, and Russell laid it up nice and high and in for two. Big six-foot-nine senior out of Casillas do Sul, Brazil. Harper's got it. Dawson Womack is checked back in, gets it to Russell on the baseline, tried to feed it to Bernardi, but they double teamed him, and now the ball is loose, and Reigns and Russell get tied up, and the possession arrow belongs to, should belong to HBU, but we've got a timeout on the floor. 7.47, a jumbo jet to go here in the first half, and the Huskies with a five-point lead, 22-17 to on the Legacy Sports Network. VIP treatment care. Thanks for saving me all that money on my car insurance, Robert. That's State Farm's discount double check. We dig through your policy, find any hidden savings. That's funny. Before every home game, I used to do an Ivy double check. Really? Yeah, people drop all kinds of stuff in here. Old cell phones, French horns. Andre Dawson? What year is it? Let State Farm find your hidden savings with a discount double check. Caught it! Woo! Get to a better state. State Farm. Hi, welcome to Raising Cane's. You know, Cane's is all about one love. It's chicken fingers that are always fresh, never, ever frozen. A friendly crew, a fun atmosphere, and a perfect chicken finger meal every time. That is one love. Raising Cane's chicken fingers. <laughs> Interview. Let back here at Sharp Gym, Lonnie King, Jeff Power. Glad you're along for the ride as you see the HBU dance team on the baseline. Good crowd on hand here tonight for this home game in the middle of the week, right before Thanksgiving. We wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Don't forget the women's basketball team returns home from a two-game road trip Wednesday night for the first of four home games in a row. Evans with the basketball here. Gets it to Russell, back to Evans, and they find Harper out on the wing. Couple of dribbles, he leaves it in the corner for Russell. Harper hits a deck, and Russell's gonna put up a two, they say. Foot on the line, and it will count, and nine points for Tyler Russell. Yeah, Russell's had the hot hand so far here as 
HBU puts up a football-like score up 24-17. Range tried to go with a no-look backdoor pass to Low Jackson and stolen away by the Huskies. Bernardi to Russell up ahead to Evans. Leaves it for Russell. He's going to take it to the baseline, puts it up. Runner won't go, and the rebound is pulled down by Stacy Davis. To Willis up ahead to Teef Russell, and there is a loose ball off the fingertips of Jet Reigns, and it'll go back over to HBU. Probably see a little bit more of a set play this time around for HBU. It's been kind of a fast-paced offensive uh, shootout so far here in the game. Now the Huskies have a little bit deeper bench than Pepperdine. Pepperdine just traveled 11, and a couple of those guys have been fighting injuries early in the season. So they may think that if they push this tempo a little bit and keep it up tempo, they can get into the legs of this Pepperdine team. There's a jumper that's short by Bernardi, and the rebound comes off to Jackson. He'll bring it up, leave it out for Davis. Davis, top of the arc. Gives it back to Jackson, picked up by Tyler Russell. Willis, as Evan comes out to get him, goes by him, leaves it off for Reigns. Reigns from the baseline, won't go, rebound to Dawson Womack. I still wouldn't leave Reigns open over there. He's hit that shot three times. Now here's Bernardi. He's going to be called for the offensive foul going to the hole as the defensive player got established under there. And that's number one on Big Art. Bernardi is the go-to guy for Houston Baptist, and he's trying to make some things happen right now. Marcus Davis checks back in. So four of the five starters are back out there. Marcel Smith heads to the scores table. He's ready to check back in, presumably for Jonathan Evans. Baker has it to Willis, Willis to Stacy Davis, and he travels with the basketball. Well, say this for our officials tonight, they've been consistent with their calls on both ends of the floor. Yeah, especially traveling, and that's okay. <laughs> you know, you don't see traveling called the NBA too often, and some of the players, they, they get used to watching it on TV and think they can get away with that extra third step, but you can't. It's all about lifting that pivot foot sometimes too. That's where they really get called on traveling. Russell back to Bernardi. He's going to pop from three. Won't go. Rolled off. And the rebound pulled down by Baker for Pepperdine. Up the floor he comes, and he will be picked up by Marcus Davis. Out to Willis. Willis looks inside, dribbles, and now bounce pass down low to Stacy Davis. Backs it in on Bernardi. Takes it through the paint, and we've got a foul. I think that's going to be number two on Art. Yeah, it's kind of a tough break for Art. Looked like Davis kind of lost his footing there, but Bernardi was the closest one to him, so he gets called for the foul. And Cody Joyce, incidentally, was at the scorer's table ready to check in. I think the coaches maybe were going to try to protect Art from getting that second foul, but he did anyway. Yeah, tough break. So Joyce does check back in. Art sits down with two fouls. Jackson on the entry pass. Puts up the jumper from the baseline, won't go. The rebound is saved, but right to Cody Joyce. Joyce will leave it for Marcel Smith, and he'll bring it up the floor. Davis with the basketball now, gets a pick from Cody. Dawson swings it around to Tyler Russell. 18 on the shot clock, plenty of time in this half-court set. Marcel Smith looks for help, gets it from Joyce, tries to work around the screen. Gets it to Davis in the corner, swinging around the arc, down to five seconds. Russell, somebody's got to put up a shot. Russell down to three, going to put it up from the paint. Oh, it won't go. Rebound is tipped around and controlled by Pepperdine. They definitely milked the clock all the way down. Here's Willis the other way, and he lays it off the glass for two. 24-19, back down to five. Huskies still with the lead. They've led throughout the first half here. It's been a pretty clean game so far. Both teams with four fouls. Russell all the way puts up the teardrop. Won't go. Looked like he might have rushed that one just a little bit. Baker back the other way in a hurry. Travel. Picked up in the middle. <laughs> There's a steal. Steal by Davis on the way to the hole, and he is. They're going to say he lost that ball out of bounds. I was going to say he was fouled from behind, but. 
Ryan McDaniel, the official, doesn't see it that way. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Let's take a look at this play one more time. I wanted to see if he might have lost control. I don't really see where he could have picked up the foul, but they, nonetheless, it's Pepperdine ball. 24-19 HPU on top, 349 to play here in the first half. And you're watching it on the Legacy Sports Network. Banking, but better. Shell Federal Credit Union. Perfect credit, not required. Shell Federal Credit Union. No matter where you work or live in Harris County, you're welcome here with full service banking. More for you at Shell FCU. Banking, but better. Shell Federal Credit Union. Three forty-nine to go in the first half here. The Huskies. Still maintaining their shooting advantage from the field in the first half here. 11 of 22 for 50%, two of three from the line. But the differential has closed a little bit. Pepperdine was down in the 30s early in this game. They've got their shooting percentage from the field up to 42%. Yeah, eight of 19. Now they're still one of five from the three-point land at 20%. But uh, in the paint right now, HBU with 14 to points to Pepperdine's 10. And also an HBU advantage in the points off turnovers, eight to five. It's been a lot of bench scoring also, 5-4 right now, HBU ahead of Pepperdine. Well, now they're going to, uh, somebody must have been assessed with a technical foul. I didn't hear about it, but. I know Coach Cottrell was not happy with the call on the other end. Well, it appeared to be simply uh, HBU losing the ball out of bounds. Uh, I could almost see that point, but but the foul being called on HBU, that, that didn't make any sense. We'll have to get a clarification on that at halftime. But it's Pepperdine basketball as Jackson made both free throws. Davis in the paint gets it to go. Down to a one point game here, 24 23. Marcus Davis with the basketball left side gets it in the low blocks to Cody Joyce. Turn around with a little hook and he kisses the front iron and rolls it down through. That's good. A chance for Cody Joyce to step up, especially when you think about Art Bernardi on the bench with two fouls right now. This is a chance for Joyce to show what he can do in the final three minutes here in the first half. And the clock does roll down past the three minute mark here in the first half. Still a three point lead for the Huskies. They have led or been tied the entire first half of this game. Davis down low, picked up by Joyce, puts it off the glass, won't go. Jackson with the rebound, fights through traffic. It won't go and the rebound taken down by Dawson Womack. Good job on the boards by HPU. Russell has it out top, left side. Joyce, as they clear out that side for him, gets it out top to Marcel Smith. Leaves it for Tyler Russell, who goes right angle to Marcus Davis. He wants to go to the baseline, but backs it out instead. Now gets the give and go from Dawson Womack. They swing it around in the corner, get it on the low blocks to, uh, to Joyce, and he is fouled inside. Bailed out there maybe as the shot clock was running down. Yeah, shot clock running down, trying to get control of the ball down around the baseline. It's a good opportunity for HBU. Checking in for the lead, number 31, Nicholas Scowin. Nicholas Scowin's going to check back in along with, for the first time tonight, for Pepperdine, big Jan Malin, number 55, a seven footer out of Tucson, Arizona. He is actually born in uh, Germany, I believe. And moved over to America as a, as a young child with his family. He checks in for the first time tonight. Husky basketball, and Russell has it right side. Out top to Marcus Davis. Swings it around to Marcel Smith. Through traffic, leaves it back. Out top for Russell, who's going to give it back to Davis. His long-distance jumper won't go. 
Fight for the rebound. It's loose on the floor. Still loose, and Womack gets it and saves it to Tyler Russell. New shot clock, and he's going to try to find Joyce, but we've got a whistle and a foul, and that's going to be called on Jet Reigns of Pepperdine. Yeah, Jet Reigns picks up the foul right there. Let's take a look at this play one more time. Nice effort right there, busting to the basket right there, and kind of loose ball, but the foul call before the ball gets thrown away. 30-second timeout as looks like Pepperdine wants to talk about it. We'll keep it right here during the timeout. Remind you that if you've got a group, and especially if you're a church, charitable organization, or a youth group, Scott Tarrant, the marketing, marketing director here at HVU, would like to hear from you. And you can give Scott a call or contact him at S. Tarrant. T-A-R-R-A-N-T at HBU.edu. And he would love to work out a deal for your group to come watch HBU basketball in person. Both coaches know what's at stake early part of the year. We talked about Lauren Jackson and Jordan Baker, a couple of players here for Pepperdine. They've been held in check for the most part so far in this game. HBU with the ball underneath the basket. Goes out top to Marcel Smith. He'll hold up the dribble out top, gets it to Russell. They work the left side of the court. Swing it around now, opposite side to Marcus Davis, and Dawson Womack will come over on the baseline and help him out. Russell back to Smith. Look for help inside, but he's still got his dribble out top, and Davis comes over to help him out. Back to Smith, long distance, won't go. They have not been very good from three-point land yet tonight but they still got a three-point lead as we roll under 60 seconds to go here in the first half. Yeah, I believe that's now 0 for 4 from behind the arc. Need to hit that outside three-point shot so you can set up the inside game. John Malin kicks it around the arc and it winds up with Baker. His long-distance jumper won't go, but the rebound to Malin gets it to Willis, and Willis trying to dish it back to him. Now Willis with the basketball on the baseline to Reigns and the short jumper goes down through. Yeah, Willis was looking pretty acrobatic there, getting it off to Reigns, and Reigns with a nice job. He's got a good touch. Reigns with eight points now as HBU settles in for the final shot of the half. 16, now 15, shot clock is off. This could be the last possession of the first half. Joyce to Russell, back to Davis. Swing it around, opposite side to Marcel Smith. Clock down to four seconds. Russell takes it in, back out top to Davis for three, and it won't go. And that's the end of the first half. So the Huskies lead the entire way. They had a little bit of a distance in between themselves and Pepperdine for most of the first half, but it winds up a one-point game as we go to the locker room at the half. We'll take the break, come back with the Huskies halftime report when we return on the Legacy Sports Network. Nestled in the comfort of the Texas Gulf Coast, Deer Park, Texas continues to prove while the birthplace of Texas is on everyone's mind. Voted best affordable suburb by the Bloomberg Business Week, Deer Park is home to many businesses and continues to grow in population and industry. With its close proximity to the Houston Ship Channel, Deer Park is home to many industrial leaders like Dow and Shell. Voted in the top 10 most affordable places to live by CNN Money, Deer Park lures many new residents year-round. These residents enjoy the comforts of many retail outlets, recreational locations, and historic sites like the Battleship Texas and San Jacinto Monument. And with a recognized school district that boasts award-winning athletic, culinary, and journalism programs, Deer Park continues to gain the attention of people nationwide. Come see what everyone's talking about and make your next visit to Texas a rebirthing experience in the birthplace of Texas. Don't worry, boots and jeans are optional. Work, stay, play, explore. That's Deer Park, Texas, uniquely you. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting so you don't have to. 
At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Here's a crazy idea. What if your bank actually paid you for using your debit card? Let's say 10 cents for every $10 or more debit card purchase. How amazing would that be? We call it Cash Back Counts Checking from Community Bank, a free debit card that pays you to use it. Even he's smiling at that. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas, bank where you live. And welcome back to Shark Gym. Jeff Power joining you here on the sidelines. 26-25 HP heating Pepperdine here at the break. Charles Bakaris now joins us. Charles is the Vice President for Advancement here at HBU. And Charles, you've seen a pretty good game. I noticed you were right there on court side on kind of a controversial play, right? Well, I like to sit on the end down there so I can really see how the offense runs, how things open up. And it's a physical game down there right now. The refs sometimes let them play and other times don't. So I was a little frustrated at one of the calls down there, but I love being a fan of basketball. I am right with you. I didn't think it was a foul, but let's talk a little bit about what's going on here at HBU. I mean, football on the horizon, a lot of big things happening here. Absolutely. It's an unbelievable time in the history of the university. As you said, football starts next fall, and uh, then the next year we join the Southland Conference in football, but all of our 14 sports will be competing in the Southland Conference as early as next year. So we're very excited about that and what it will mean in the, in the life of the university. And this is a time of year where basketball is now starting to take over. HBU with a great basketball team this season. And coming up, a big trip to Hawaii. That must have been a lot of fun. I think the team looked pretty good out there. I think they had a lot of fun, which is important. And I think this team this year is a little stronger, a little better shooting on the wings. And uh, you know, even though we have seven freshmen, I think these kids are maturing pretty quickly, and they're playing well together. Tell us what all you do here at HBU and kind of fill us in on some of the changes you've seen since your time being in here. Sure, I've been at the university now four years and as Vice President of Advancement, I'm responsible for fundraising and alumni relations. So we're really focused on trying to build traditions, build on the traditions that are here. And then of course, with the introduction of football, we're gonna in institute some new traditions like tailgating and some other fun things around that game, which we hope will lead to bigger alumni engagement. That's what we're certainly hoping for. And possibly stadium changes in the future? We're working on a facility on campus, which will be on the south end of campus, uh, because you know I've been at a university where we played our games off campus, and it's really hard to develop a culture and tradition when you don't play on campus. So we're very excited about that possibility happening soon. Okay, Charles Bakaris, Vice President for Advancement here at HBU. What do you say we take a quick timeout? We'll break down the first half and have much more in just a moment. All right, great. Well, thank you. Cheddar, bacon, onion. Yeah, it's uh, it's three menus. <laughs> three menus. Three menus. Say hello to McDonald's new. Three menus. CBO. Smooth cheddar, crispy bacon, grilled onions on the Angus Third Pounder or premium chicken sandwiches. CBO, the simple joy of tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> Done. What'd you think about that chapter on subliminal messaging? Hey, I'm not really buying it. I'm fried. Yeah, it's been a pretty rough quarter. Well, at least we got this material to unfold. You hungry? I am. Hi, Mr. McDonald. You know the, you first, know the thing first thing people say after trying Raising Cane's premium, fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers? Served with extra long crinkle cut fries, made fresh daily cane sauce, and grilled Texas toast? They say, where have you been all my life? To which our chicken fingers don't reply because, well, chicken fingers can't talk. Raising Cane's, one love. We're at the half here at Sharp Gym of our game between the HBU Huskies and the Pepperdine Waves from Malibu, California. 
Huskies have a one-point lead here at the half, 26-25. Let's take a look back at some of the first half highlights here, Jeff, and see how we got to where we are right now. Here's Tyler Russell early in this first half with a nice move on the baseline. Yeah, Tyler Russell's been kind of leading the way. He's had a really good first half here with nine points, finding a way to get the open shot. Dawson Womack poured in a long-distance jumper early. Pepperdine hung around, though. It, they trailed 6-2 and then came back and tied it up. There you see Mariba De Freitas, and here's Atif Russell, the young man out of Seven Lakes High School. Well, and Pepperdine has scored 12 points in the paint, but HBU has popped in 16 points in the paint. Saw Bernardi there with his little put back, and then he dished it off to Tyler Russell there. The Huskies have been moving up and down the floor at times here in the first half at a pretty good pace. Yeah, and most of these points here for Pepperdine coming in the paint. You see they've done a nice job of working inside and then back outside. And from the outside right there, you saw the shot open from the corner. And uh, that's kind of the story. Also, Jet Reigns with eight first-half points for Pepperdine, and uh, he's leading the way for the Waves. Shooting cooled off for both these teams. Well, actually cooled off for Houston Baptist and heated up a little bit toward the end of the first half for Pepperdine. They started out cold, and uh, HBU started out very hot early in the game, but... Wound up shooting 46.2 from the field, and Pepperdine almost caught up to them. They're 10 of 24 for 41.7. Yeah, and Pepperdine with a slight advantage on uh, points off turnovers with a 9-8 advantage. Second chance points, 4-4 four to four right there. And a HBU with two fast break points to Pepperdine's zero. As far as bench scoring, HBU's done a nice job there with seven points off the bench, and Pepperdine right with them at six. And midway through the first half, with uh, just under 12 minutes to go, HBU had an 8-4 lead in rebounds, but that dissolved. And in fact, at the half, over the last 12 minutes of the first half, Pepperdine out-rebounded the Huskies. And I imagine this is a topic of discussion in the locker room right now. Pepperdine out-rebounded the Huskies 13-4 in the last 12 minutes. Yeah, I got to work on that rebounding. That's uh, been kind of one of the keys, especially Dawson uh, Womack. He's done a really nice job for Houston Baptist with six rebounds. But you look at what uh, some of the other guys have done on the other side, Stacey Davis with six rebounds, and also Jordan Baker, even three, as uh, Low Jack, as he's known, Lauren Jackson with three rebounds. But you know what? How about this, though? We talked about Lauren Jackson and Jordan Baker being sort of the key players. Well, Jackson only has two points so far in this game, and Jordan Baker has five. So HBU's done a pretty good job of keeping those guys in check. Tyler Russell leads the way for the Huskies with nine, and Art Bernardi right behind him with six. Five off the bench from Cody Joyce after Bernardi got in foul trouble late in the first half. Well, we're just about set for the second half. We'll take another break, though. When we come back, talk a little bit about the future home of the Huskies compared to where they are this season in the Great West Conference, headed for the Southland Conference next year. I'm gonna give you a look on screen here what a difference they can expect next season when we come back on the Legacy Sports Network. Here's a crazy idea. What if your bank actually paid you for using your debit card? Let's say 10 cents for every $10 or more debit card purchase. How amazing would that be? We call it Cash Back Counts Checking from Community Bank, a free debit card that pays you to use it. Even he's smiling at that. Swipe all you can from your bank. Community Bank of Texas, bank where you live. One of the best things about State Farm is our accessibility. Oh, yeah? You can call us 24-7, get quotes online, start a claim with our smartphone app. You name it, we're here anytime, anywhere. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. Any way you want it. All night. All night. Every night. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. We just had ourselves a little journey moment there. Yep. Saw him in 83 in Fresno. Place was crawling with chicks. I gotta go. Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Welcome back into Sharp Gym here at the half of our game between the HBU Huskies and the Pepperdine Waves. 26-25, HBU with the lead. And as they get ready to come back out onto the floor to prepare for the second half, let's take a look, Jeff, at the difference that's going to be coming up next season for HBU. This is their final season in the Great West Conference, and it's 
the incredible shrinking conference because <laughs> they lose a couple of teams, uh, or at least a team every year lost from last year's conference lineup in basketball. They lost North Dakota coming into this season. Just five teams in the Great West Conference this year, and you see those other four teams, Chicago State, NJIT out of Newark, New Jersey, Texas Pan American out of the Valley here in Utah Valley out in Orem, Utah. The five teams that make up the conference this season. HBU, by the way, off to the best start early in the season of any of those five schools, three and one out of the gate. Utah Valley, who's projected to be the conference champion this season, uh, has a pair of wins. But that small conference this year going to the Southland next year, take a look at what their lineup will look like that they'll have to face. This year, the Southland is a 10-team conference, but the teams in orange there are going to be new participants joining the league last year. It's going to be a 14-team league that they move into. Yeah, it's going to be a good basketball conference. You look at Abilene Christian right there. Of course, Houston Baptist, Incarnate Word, and New Orleans known for their uh, basketball abilities. Of course, uh, the Southland Conference will bring in HBU here in all sports in 2013, but Houston Baptist has announced that they will actually have a football team ready to start play in 2014. So uh, exciting times here on the campus of HPU, a stadium coming on site, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and they, they, as you say, they, they will not play football next year in the Southland Conference, and that gives Coach Vic Sheely, who has taken over the football program here, an opportunity to sort of groom a team to prepare them for the Southland Conference. You know, with Sam Houston State coming up on the radar in football for them, that's going to be a – a nice little challenge early in this uh, football program's uh, young life. And, you know, people kind of forget at times about some of the players that have come out of the Southland Conference that have gone on to great NFL careers. Larry Centers comes to mind. He played over at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, Mike Barber, former Houston Oiler, you might remember that name. Uh, Pat Tilly, a player that became pretty famous right. for uh, his service in Afghanistan. And if you think about it, uh, the NFL, they don't care if you played in a major <laughs> conference or not. They want to know if you can play football can you play? out there. Yeah, right. and, and bottom line is there's a lot of great athletes in the Southland Conference. Marcus Spears, another one that kind of comes to mind is, uh, you know, it, it's a league that is full of great football teams. Central Arkansas having a great uh, team this year. Of course, Sam Houston, very competitive as well. Well, the, and the, the other attraction for HBU, of course, is the fact that you, you pick up a larger conference schedule. You uh, pick up in basketball an automatic bid if you win the conference tournament into the NCAA tournament, which they do not have right now in the Great West Conference. Um, but it also makes your, your travel schedule and your recruiting yeah. really uh, base a lot more. Uh, your, your recruiting is a lot more efficient if you can tell kids and their parents especially that they're going to get to see a lot of the games at home and on the road. And that really is the big selling point. I mean, the Great West, great conference, no question about it. A lot of travel, though. Right. Southland Conference will keep everybody in a little bit tighter. Looking forward to some trips, uh, you know, all around this part of the country. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we're just about set to go here in the second half. Huskies and the Pepperdine Waves are back out onto the floor. Hey, just a little housekeeping here. In the first half, we had that as we came back out of the break, we had a little bit of a confusing situation where Pepperdine was at the line, and I did confirm with Russ Renault, the SID here for HBU, that Coach Ron Cottrell did pick up a technical in that first half. Well, and, you know, kind of fittingly, uh, Charles Bakaris and I were talking about the play. It happened right in front of him over here on the sidelines, and he, he kind of saw it the way we did, that we didn't really think it was a foul. But uh, nonetheless, it, it was called, and we play on. <laughs> and the coach uh, thought something should have been called, and he picked up a technical because of that. Pepperdine basketball, Willis out top. Jackson is in the starting lineup here in the second half. Gets it to Davis, high post to Baker. Baker has it stolen away. Marcel Smith on the run. He's outnumbered three to one, but tries to take it to the hole anyway, and it's going to be out of bounds off of Pepperdine to be HBU basketball. Yeah, good opportunity there for Marcel Smith. He might have wanted to pull up right here. You don't want to go one on three, but uh, he thought he had an opportunity and uh, gets the ball rejected right there, but nonetheless, HBU basketball. Dawson Womack, Marcus Davis, Art Bernardi up front. 
Marcel Smith, Tyler Russell in the backcourt for the Huskies in their home whites. Second home game of the year. They won the opener 82 to 73 against Dallas Christian. Here's the backdoor alley-oop intended for Bernardi, but not sure he was ready and the angle was not good. And so it goes out of bounds and goes over to Pepperdine. Just underway here in the second half. 19-22 to go in regulation time. Jackson to Baker. Now they get it in the low blocks to Davis. He tries to back it down on Bernardi. Turn around, won't go, and he's called for the travel anyway. Yeah, the officials uh, not afraid to call the traveling call tonight. Ryan McDaniel, KB Burdett, Darren George. George is the uh, referee tonight. Huskies with the basketball. Marcel Smith has it. Takes it left side, out top. Looks inside, but instead goes cross court to Davis. Finds Womack back to Davis. Russell to Smith. Smith looks inside. They want to set up the big fella, and they finally get it to him down in the low blocks. Backs it down on Stacy Davis. Turn around, fade away from the baseline. Won't go. Dawson Ooh. Womack tried to tip the rebound, but Bernardi had vacated, and they're going to say it went out off of Pepperdine, so there's a break for HBU. Yeah, Bernardi, he, he left his spot right there, but nonetheless, it ends up being out off Pepperdine, so another opportunity. Let's reset that shot clock. HBU basketball, Huskies get it in to Davis, out top to Smith. Back to Russell. Last field goal for HBU came with 3.20 to go in the first half. So they've been stuck on this number for a little while. They'd like to get off the mark here, and there it is. Just as we say it, it's Art Bernardi. Got the first points of the first half, gets the first points of the second half. Yeah, Art Bernardi now with eight points. He's only got one rebound in the game. But uh, key for him to have that type of shot so we can open up some things even down low for him. Stacy Davis backs it down again. Winds up going outside. Nothing there with Bernardi down low. Jackson takes nice. it through the traffic on the baseline and lays it off the glass. Yeah, low jack. Did a nice job there. Just somehow found a seam and penetrated and laid it up for an easy two. Back down to a one-point game. That's just four points in the ball game for Jackson, one of their leading scorers on this team. There's a pass saved by Womack out top to Davis. Davis for three. Can't find the range from long distance, and the rebound quickly up ahead to Pepperdine's Davis. So is that Davis or Willis who hit the deck? That was actually that was Jackson on the floor. And he and Marcus Davis looks like collided. Yeah, Marcus Davis kind of grabbing his side right now. Looks like he's okay. Hate to see that. Kind of a hard fall right there. Was that 32 or 22? It might have been Dawson Womack. It was Davis. It appeared that Marcus Davis kind of jumped a little too soon. It was on his way back down, and then he tried to extend it the last minute to knock it away, and then the collision. Inside, the Huskies go to Bernardi, turn around, and they call him for a travel. Two officials blew their whistles at the same time from opposite sides of the floor. Bernardi, he's asking about that. He doesn't think he was guilty of that. Willis right side to Jackson. Jackson looks down low for Willis on the baseline. He's not looking at the basket, looking for help. It goes cross court to Baker, who gets it down low to Jackson and back out to Stacy Davis. Long distance won't go, and Marcus Davis pulls down the board. On the run, up ahead, Bernardi backs it down, going to turn around, won't go. Marcus Davis almost with the board, saved underneath by Tyler Russell. Looking for help, going to put up the fadeaway off the glass. They try to force that one up, and it won't go. Yeah, I think Russell wanted a foul called right there, but he didn't get it. So Pepperdine still within a point here, an opportunity to take their first lead of the ball game on this possession as they've had a couple of possessions up the floor. Each side with just a single bucket, and there's going to be an offensive foul. Called on Stacy Davis, and for Stacy Davis, that'll be his first personal. 
And the first team foul brings us to a timeout on the floor. 15.59 to go here in the second half. And HBU up by a point, 28-27. Shell Federal Credit Union, perfect credit, not required. Shell Federal Credit Union, no matter where you work or live in Harris County, you're welcome here with full service banking. More for you at Shell FCU, banking, but better. Shell Federal Credit Union. HBU still has not trailed in this game, Jeff, tonight, but they've gotten off to a little bit of a cold start here in the second half. Yeah, just one of six so far here in the second half, 16.7%. And on the other hand, Pepperdine, only two shots so far, but they've made one of two for 50%. DeFreitas checks back in for Pepperdine out of the timeout, and he joins Willis Baker, Jackson, and Reigns out on the floor. Jonathan Evans has checked in for the Huskies, and he joins Tyler Russell, Art Bernardi, Dawson Womack, and Marcus Davis. Davis with the basketball, dribbles it back out top, kicks it over to Evans. Evans looks for help inside, leaves it in the corner instead for Russell. Russell gets Bernardi to pop out. Now he's going to dribble, dish it back out to Evans. Shot clock winding down. Down to three, and Bernardi puts it up, rattles out, won't go. The rebound taken down by Marcus, and he finds Bernardi cutting through the paint, and he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Well, you saw Big R2 stick the elbow up, and that's pretty easy to spot for the officials there. Well, but I like the hustle. I mean, Art was actually going back down towards the basket, trying to make something happen right there, but that's his third foul. Watch, here's the hustle, but, yeah, the elbow gets in the way. If he doesn't lift the elbow up, he might actually – Yeah. Uh, he's sitting on the free throw line right now. Still a one-point lead, 15-18 to go here in the second half. Talk about a game of inches. You don't want Bernardi on the bench with 15 minutes to play with three fouls. No, and that's where he is right now. Reigns are checking out to Jackson, won't go. And the other way, here come the Huskies. Russell tried to leave it for Joyce underneath, and he lost control, and back the other way goes Pepperdine. Into the corner, they find Willis wide open for a three, and he drops it down through. Yeah, Willis wide open. Nobody picked him up on that corner, and he drains the three-pointer. Just like that, HBU no longer leads for the first time tonight. Comes at the 14-43 mark here in the second half. Russell with the basketball now. Gets it down to Davis. Davis back inside to Joyce, puts it up and in, and the freshman has had a good game off the bench. That's seven points, and he'll go to the line for the plus one. Yeah, that's what you want to see right there. Cody Joyce coming into the game, making something happen. He had five points in the first half. And look at him right here. He slips around, gets a little bit of space, and does a nice job. So he was one of two. His first two free throw attempts came in the first half. As we told you, this is his fourth game of the five that the Huskies have played to play in, and he misses that free throw there. And so now it's all tied up at 30 apiece. Third tie of the ball game. Willis gets a pick from DeFreitas into the corner to Jackson, back to Willis, swing it around to Baker. Baker walks, but no call. Into the corner he goes to Range. Range jumper from the baseline won't go, and the rebound controlled by Dawson Womack. Great rebound by Womack. Evans back to Womack. He's going to go through the paint, has it swatted away. Mariba DeFreitas got the hand up. It'll be Husky basketball. Yeah, DeFreitas said, get that freight out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Davis is going to check back in. Stacy Davis for Pepperdine. And Jet Reigns, the freshman out of Capel, 
is going to check out for the Waves. Husky basketball, Tyler Russell gets it inbound to John Evans. Evans wants a pick from Joyce, and the freshman comes out to set it. This is a pretty quick lineup right here for HBU. I want to see if they maybe run a little bit with this lineup. Davis high post to Joyce. He looks cross court to Evans, almost threw it away, but saved by the junior. Tyler Russell down to seven on the shot clock. Evans looking to go inside, but now they're running out of time. Marcus Davis long distance short off the iron. Won't go, the rebound is tipped, but controlled by Pepperdine. Yeah, that's not the shot that uh, they're looking for right there. Willis into the corner to Jackson. Jackson for three, his jumper is short. And now here they come in a hurry. You talked about the quickness and here it is on display, but into traffic, into the corner, Russell goes to Evans. Pepperdine gets back in the half court set, Womack Kicks it out top to Russell, dribbles down, puts up the runner, won't go with the right hand. Rebound tipped around, it's loose on the floor and controlled by Joyce. Well, they tried to run off the transition, which I like seeing that, and now they'll have a chance to set a play up and see if they can work the ball maybe back inside. Evans will take it down through the heart of the paint, off the glass, but they're going to call him for the offensive oh. foul. Yeah, tough break right there. You like the effort? Let's take a look at this one more time. Oh, yeah, I tell you what, you know, when the defensive player lifts his feet up off the ground, tough to call a charge, but in that case, it's called. So nonetheless, there's something to keep in mind. File it away. Next time you're going into that lane, you might want to be a little more careful, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> well, and it looked maybe like he was sliding a little laterally there, too. Yeah. But three. Back to up the floor, still tied up at 30. They go. Of course, we'll have the benefit of instant replay. <laughs> <laughs> Baker walks with the basketball, so they'll give it right back over to HBU. It's like a boxing match in this contest where neither team really is taking advantage. They throw a couple of jabs and then step back, and that kind of where we are right now. James Harper checks back in. Yeah, James Harper had 11 points uh, in the UAPB opener. Three of those, or check it, uh, nine of those 11 came from three-point range. There's a long-distance jumper from Womack. Won't go, but he chases down his own rebound, and we've got a whistle and a travel. Womack got out of control there, backing it down. And that was, by the way, an Arkansas Pine Bluff victory for HBU, 72-68 to start the season. And then they beat Maryland Eastern Shore, 70-55. to Lost out in Hawaii. Might have seen that game on ESPN, 73-60, before defeating Dallas Christian at home, 82-73. 30-30 here, under 12 minutes to go in the second half. Willis dribbles down through, kicks it out to Baker, swinging around the arc, and it winds up down with DeFreitas. Back out top, he goes to Willis. He looked for help, almost walked, but puts up the jumper short. DeFreitas pulls down the board, takes it to the hole, leaves it on the baseline for Stacy Davis, and gets it to go down through. Yeah, Stacy Davis got those big shoulders, grinds in two more. So back out by two points again, second lead of the ball game for Pepperdine. Harper. Way out top, looking for help. Womack comes out. Three freshmen on the floor right now for the Huskies. Got to see what you've got. Evans dribbles through, gets a pick. He takes it to the hole, has it swatted away, and Willis is on the run the other way. One on one, and he's going to take it to the hole. He's fouled by Harper and gets the bucket to go. Yeah, Pepperdine right there on the transition. Nice job by Caleb Willis. And it was going to be the Willis show right here because the rest of his team decided not to come down the floor. Willis said, that's all right, I got it right here. Nice layup, and he's fouled. Timeout on the floor, 10.52 to go here. Pepperdine has opened up a four-point lead on HBU, 34-30. to You're watching it on the Legacy Sports Network. 
returns to Reliance Stadium as the Big 12 faces off against the Big 10 at the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas Friday, December 28th. Bring your family and friends to experience the passion, pageantry, and football tradition that can only be seen in the Lone Star State. For more information, go online to Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas.com or call 832-667-2390. We'll see you in December for a football celebration as big as Texas. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Lonnie King, Jump Power with you as we come back to Sharp Gym. See Charles Bacaris, our halftime guest. And Jeff, you can look at really one number here in the second half and understand why the Huskies have fallen behind by four points. Yeah, 15% shooting, two of 13. That pretty much sums it up right now here for Houston Baptist. They've only scored four points here in the second half, and we're almost 10 minutes in. Outscored nine to four. Willis at the line, and Vance trying to make some noise, and the free throw is no good. Doesn't get the plus one to go, and Harper gets the rebound for HBU. And coaches will always tell you, if you're not shooting well, at least give me some good defense and some rebounding. We'll now see if they can improve on that. The three fouls under his belt. Art Bernardi is checked back in during the timeout, so you can tell Coach Cottrell thinks this is a critical portion of the game, and there's a whistle and a foul. Going to be called on Caleb Willis. That is the third team foul. Both teams with three fouls right now. Pretty Tell much a foul-free game. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, you talked about that in the first half. Not a, neither team got to the bonus in the first half. And down halfway through, both teams just with three team fouls here in the second half. Evans loses his dribble, leaves it for Harper, tries to go inside, almost tipped away. Back to Evans. He leaves it on the baseline for Bernardi, and we've got a foul on the floor. Now it's so, going to be called on Scowen. Yeah, so HBU will inbound it. So now four fouls on Pepperdine, who lead 34-30. Fourth team foul on the Waves. And Harper will look to inbound the ball on the baseline. Still looks for help, gets it into Evans. Out to roll down past the midway mark here in the second half. Bernardi with the basketball down low and takes it strong off the glass for two. And that's what Bernardi gives you, that down low presence that HBU needs right now. When you're shooting two of 13 in the second half, you need someone who can get it in and get it in close. That's what Bernardi does. He comes off the bench and does a nice job scoring two. Has 12 in the ball game now. And it's back down to a two-point game, 34-32. Here's the long distance jumper from Baker on the wing, won't go. The tip won't go, rebounded again by Davis. They had four looks at the basketball, and the ball is still loose on the floor and finally controlled by Dawson Womack. Huskies with a chance to tie or take the lead. Bernardi wants to give them the lead, too strong, and the rebound is pulled down by Marcus Davis, and he's going to be fouled. i tell you, Marcus Davis was a hustling Husky right there. Look at the rebounding effort right here. Are you talking about getting up high? His head was up around the net. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the personal was called on Caleb Willis. That's his second. Team foul number five. I think Coach Cottrell is arguing for a shooting foul. Yeah, that's what I thought too. They're going to say no shot, though, and they're going to give it to the Huskies on the baseline. That's the second time that's happened, but a good chance to drop some plays underneath the basket. This time of year, you're trying to find out what you've got in your team. When you, when you bring out certain lineups, what are they going to do for you? Harper tries to pull the quick trigger and won't go in the rebound. Davis again comes down with it. Willis winds up on his back, and that's going to be the quick third foul on Caleb Willis. i tell you what. Davis could get up. Look at this right here, how high he gets up. 
Drop him down to the forward position. <laughs> he can really sky. Well, we got a timeout on the floor. And the uh, Huskies want to talk it over here. With 9.19 to go here in the second half. Mentioned to you that this is the second home game of the season. Uh, after their first three on the road, they've come back for a couple. But this weekend, HBU will head back out on the road. Yeah, they're going to travel and uh, take on Eastern Illinois on the road. And then it's almost a home game and playing Rice uh, just across town here in Houston on December 1st. Uh, then it's back at home again against Sam Houston State on December 8th. It's a 7.05 tip for Sam Houston State in the Southland Conference now, a future opponent right there. Yeah, and, and really right around Christmas time, the schedule gets a little interesting for HBU. It's right before Christmas, they'll travel out to Eugene, Oregon, play the Oregon Ducks on their home floor. Then after Christmas, they travel to Baton Rouge to play LSU, play Army here, and then a quick trip up the road to College Station. Yeah, not afraid to play a tough schedule. I like that. You need to find out what you have in your team. You want to test them, throw them out there against some of the top teams in this area and find out what you've got. Huskies trail by two here. 34-32, 9.20 to go here in the ball game. You know, and I was just thinking, if you're a recruit and you see that schedule, I mean, that's nice. That's a nice-looking schedule, playing teams like Oregon, LSU, Army, Texas A&M. That Army game's here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Pepperdine, a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> hey. Hey, don't think the seven think freshmen on this squad. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Davis will inbound the ball and he'll go all the way out top to Dawson Womack. Tried to feed it down low to Bernardi and he just couldn't get a handle on it and it's stolen away. Jackson the other way, strong to the hole, but they're going to call a blocking foul on Dawson Womack and he will pick up the personal and that is number one on Dawson Womack. Yeah, let's take a look one more time. Did Womack have his feet set? He did it first, then he kind of picked him up there towards the end. So the... See the frustration on yeah. Coach Cottrell's face. This is one of those kind of games where you got to try to find a way to eke it out. You're not shooting real well. You're down now, 35-32, 9 minutes, 12 seconds to play. But somehow, you've got to find a way to, to win these kind of games. Might as well start learning now. Saw the numbers on Jackson from the free throw line. 91% shooter at the line coming in, and he's 4 of 4 now as he makes both of those tonight. So he staked Pepperdine back out to a four point lead. Evans with the basketball, dribbles left to right. Onto the baseline goes to Harper. Harper off the glass. Gets his first bucket of the ball game, and it's back down to two. That's what you can get from Harper when he comes into the game some agility. Nice shot using that uh, backboard there. He's got that shooter's touch. Scowland's going to pull the trigger. Won't go from long distance. The rebound pulled down by Womack. Chance to tie on this possession. Davis going to hold it up and leave it out top for Evans. Evans wants the set as Womack comes over. Try to find Davis on the baseline. Back to Harper instead. Harper is going to dribble down. Takes it to the floor and puts go. it up and in to tie the ball game. Yeah, James Harper is one of those kind of players. He's kind of like a gym rat. Hangs around late, shoots a lot of, at practice, and that's what you need. A guy who's confident, he knows where he is on the floor at all times. Uses every inch of that rim and backboard if he can. Has the last four points now and has brought the Huskies back to a tie. 36-36, fourth tie of the ball game. Here's a long distance jumper, rolls off and tipped up and in by Malin, and he will go to the line for the plus one. Yeah, Malin to make it look easy underneath. He's got such good size, just tipped that one back in. Look at Malin, he's gonna come out of the, uh, the bottom of your screen, kind of makes a little wave the other that he's open. He's wide open right there, can't quite get it to him, but then Malin is underneath for the rebound. Look at that, nice boxing out, one hand, tip, and then put it back in. He's pretty pumped up about it. 
So we got a timeout on the floor. Pepperdine back up by two, 38-36, 7.46 to go here in the ball game. Back with more on the Legacy Sports Network. Our innermost desire is the force that inspires us to find outright delight. With any size icy cold Coca-Cola, soft drink, or sweet tea for just a dollar. Seven forty-four to go in this ball game. Huskies still not shooting well from the field. They picked it up a little bit though. Five of eighteen for. A, just under 28%. Interesting tonight, though, three-point field goal tries. They are 0 for 9. Yeah, they haven't had that outside shot from uh, three-point land, but nonetheless, right in this game, only down two, 38-36, kind of weathered that storm right there, not shooting too well. What has worked for them seems to be Art Bernardi down low. Make that work. Don't worry about the three-point shot right now. If it's not there, don't take it. Officials right here in front of us uh, wanting to discuss something. I'm not. I, and then we had our headsets replay. on. <laughs> they, I, th I think they just wanted to be I'll around show us. Some replay. I got some plays I want to queue up for them. <laughs> <laughs> now this is that time of year where, I mean, across the board, you've got, you know, players trying to. Right now, you try to find out as a player, hey, all right, what can I get away with on the floor? And right from the get-go, the officiating crew let us know that they were going to call traveling, which I think is a good thing. They need to call more of that in, in yeah. basketball at the collegiate level and, of course, on up into the pros. Malin missed the free throw, so it's still a two-point game as the Huskies come up the floor, trailing 38-36. Harper back to Evans. Evans. Directing the traffic here, trying to get it into Bernardi, stolen away. Jackson the other way, does not have numbers. He was outnumbered, but took it to the hole anyway, and he's fouled. Yeah, he's so quick. He, he realized the opportunity right there was his to try to move it down the floor and at least, if not come away with a layup for two, at least get fouled. That's exactly what he got. Look at that, one on four. <laughs> he had a man open to the outside right there. Nicholas Scowan, but he elected uh, to just go ahead Try to put it up, and it looks like the right move as Lojack heads to the free throw line. Well, again, a great free throw shooter. Four of four, now five of five from the line tonight. He's just one of seven from the field, so it's been his free throws that have made the difference tonight. He's got seven points now. Jonathan Evans and James Harper check out. Marcel Smith back in, along with Tyler Russell. There's a tip on the missed free throw, the first miss of the night by Jackson. It's knocked out of bounds by Scowan, and it'll be Husky basketball trailing by three. Coaches will tell you, give me, give me four minutes. You know, you can play in four-minute waves. That's when the uh, the timeouts are set up for. It's an important four minutes here for HBU. It rolls down to the seven-minute mark in the ball game. Marcel Smith on the dribble, still with the basketball. And we've seen this a lot. Pepperdine, with those quick hands, has been able to disrupt the dribble or the passing lane all night long. Yeah, especially Jackson. He's so quick on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think there's any question. He's probably their top player. He can just do it all. On the baseline, Russell goes to the hole, won't go. Womack tries to follow. Bernardi with the board, but he's going to be fouled. Well, that's how you crash the boards right there. Bernardi doing a nice job of getting on the glass and cleaning things up. You see Bernardi on the right side of your screen stepping up right there. Half the battle is getting your hands on it, getting control over it. A lot of times you can get a cheap foul down low. Bernardi's first free throw of the night is good. He's only been a 38% free throw shooter early in the season here. That's kind of been his Achilles heel, but gets the first one there. And gets the second as well. Down to a one-point game, 39-38. Pepperdine with the lead in the basketball. Bernardi with 14 points now. Defense! 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 Defense!
McGowan back out top to Baker. Into the corner they go to Jackson. Long distance won't go. And rebound pulled down by Scowan. That's a big rebound for Pepperdine. Yeah, nicely done right there by Nicholas Scowan. Baker, high post goes to Davis. Davis to Lojack, back to Davis. Has it blocked, and the Huskies come away with it. Russell on the run, strong to the hole, off the glass, won't go. The rebound is knocked out of bounds off of Art Bernardi. Back over to Pepperdine it goes. And the Huskies have had some opportunities to recapture that lead, and they just haven't been able to connect. Well, they were fortunate not to give up any points on that last trip down the floor for Pepperdine. Great ball movement. Jackson strong. Into the paint, has it knocked away. Bernardi on the run, up ahead to Davis. Or check it to Smith. And Smith has the ball tipped away, knocked out of bounds off of Pepperdine, off of Baker. Jordan Baker knocks it out. It'll be Husky basketball. Yeah, it's been a physical game uh, in the second half. Nice job with the rebound right there by Bernardi. Just kind of losing his dribble there at the end. And that was unfortunate. It looked like uh, Marcel Smith had a pretty open opportunity there, but just lost the handle. Adds it out top now, leaves it for Marcus Davis, right side. Looks high post to Womack. Womack thought about a shot, kicks it back out to Russell instead. Bounce pass to Smith, and we got a foul. Going to be called on Jackson. And HBU will go to the line here. One on one situation. Eight fouls now on Pepperdine. Incidentally, six fouls right now on HBU, so the next foul on them will put Pepperdine in the bonus. Pretty good job by Tyler Russell that time to sell that foul and get the call. Third foul on Jackson, and so Russell with an opportunity to tie and or give the Huskies the lead, and Tyler gets the first one to go down through. He's been 9 of 11 from the free throw line coming into this game and now 2 of 2 tonight. So he's up over the 83% mark for the season. Cody Joyce has checked back in for HPU. So we're going to go big here in the last 529. And we'll go down under five and a half minutes and the Huskies have retaken the lead by one, 40 to 39. Hang on to your seats. This one looks like it might, might be going down to the wire. Willis, Baker back to Willis, into Jackson. Jackson again, left angle. Back out top to Willis, shot clock down to nine. Baker to Willis, Willis dribbles down, left angle, puts it up with a runner, and it rolls down through. Got to find a way to not allow him to penetrate that far in, Willis. Looking like a linebacker rolling through there. <laughs> Joyce, cross court to Russell. Split second sooner, and he might have had an open look at a three, but instead kicks it back out. Now on the baseline, Bernardi finds Joyce inside and gets it to go down through. You know, Cody Joyce is quietly having a good game. Nine points for him right now. Third leading scorer on the team. You know, Coaches this time of year trying to see what works, what kind of uh, rotations they want to get themselves into. If they want to go big, this is a pretty good rotation right here. Here's Jackson. Off glass, won't go. Rebound stolen away by Joyce. Outlet to Russell, up ahead to Bernardi. Into the paint, has it stolen away, but he's going to be fouled by Caleb Willis. And that's going to be the third. Check it. That may be the fourth on Caleb Willis. Yeah, look at Bernardi. Taking advantage of the situation. Saw that his defender's feet were moving. Just kept on going towards the basket. Now he's on the free throw line. Chance for HBU to build on their one-point lead. Saw Pepperdine coach Marty Wilson on the bench there. Bernardi averaging 18-5 a game, but has a couple of free throws here. 4.05 to go in this one. Free throw rolls off, one and one, so he won't get the second. 
And we go under the four minute mark. Huskies now draw back into a 2 3 zone. Baker going to blow by the defender, puts up the jumper. Joyce with the rebound. I like what I see in this 2 3 zone. They're taking advantage of the big men down low. I think this lineup works out pretty well. I mean, with Bernardi back there, having Cody Joyce next to him, and then you've got the the ability of Marcus Davis to go up high. That's that's three pretty good rebounders right there. Marcel Smith with the basketball. Still on the dribble. Almost had it stolen away. Tip. Now they're going to call it over and back. It looked from it our tipped. angle. Yeah. Of course, HBU thinking that ball was tipped by Pepperdine, which of course would not have been over and back. Ron Cottrell getting an explanation from Ryan McDaniel. And I doubt that whatever explanation he got is going to be satisfactory. <laughs> 3.15 to go in this one. We got a timeout on the floor. HBU leads by one, 42 to 41. Back into Sharp Jim. Jeff, you're looking at some of the numbers for the Huskies here. Well, the shooting percentage is still pretty low for Houston Baptist at 26%, but I think that's why they've decided now to change up their philosophy a little bit, maybe go big and see if they can get some points uh, down in the paint. And what that also does is it makes them play a zone defense on the other side of the floor, which has worked out pretty well so far. I mean, Art Bernardi's got 12 points. Uh, Jonathan, or excuse me, Cody Joyce has picked up nine points and also three rebounds. And how about Dawson Womack? 14 rebounds so far, 11 on the defensive side for Houston Baptist. It's his best effort as uh, in his short collegiate career, just five games in now, but a great effort tonight nonetheless. Pepperdine basketball, and you hear the fans calling for defense to come out for the Huskies right now. Malin high post gets it in the corner to Jackson back out top to Mills who's checked in. Mills on the dribble cross court to Baker Baker back across to Jackson long distance jumper won't go and Marcus Davis pulls down the board great rebound by Marcus Davis you know he's having some trouble on the offensive side he's only one of six but he has picked up six really key rebounds. Has a basketball now, goes baseline to Russell. Russell in the traffic, kicks it way back out to Bernardi. Bernardi cross court to Evans. Down on the baseline to Davis. Back to Evans, he's bumped by Jackson. No call, cross court. Russell for three, oh, he gets it to go. <laughs> yeah, well, Russell having a fantastic game here. Sinks the three pointer. He's now got 14 points. That leads HBU. Well, and if you're going to pick a time to get your first free or three-point field goal tonight, <laughs> that's a pretty good time to get it. Yeah, hard to believe it took that long, but uh, nonetheless, HBU is up by four points right now. They haven't really needed the outside shot. Look at it again, Joyce cutting through. I think he, if he'd have gotten a hand on that, that might have messed up the whole play. But Russell finishes it off and. Take a look at some of the fans on hand here tonight. That's a good look. Halloween ended last one, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, when you're in college, every day is an adventure. There you go. It's always Halloween, right? <laughs> yeah, Tyler Russell's had a great game. I mean, 14 points. Has taken quite a few shots, but has done a nice job overall here. Getting the open shot when he can. And uh, that three-pointer was really big. In a game where it seems like points have been hard to come by here in the second half, a three-pointer is like a dagger. <laughs> well, and, and let's let's look at the big picture. We still got 
A little over uh, two minutes to go in this one, so it is by no means over. But if the Huskies could figure out a way to scrap out a win here against a pretty good athletic Pepperdine team on their home floor when they really haven't shot well here in the second half, that would be another, you know, Ron Cottrell talked about wanting to grow as a team every game. This could be another little growth point for that team. Yeah, it certainly could. They've, they've played good defense. I, I like this zone defense. I, it'll be interesting to see what happens down the stretch. Mark this, this moment right here, 45-41. We'll see if they can hold them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's the zone buster right there. Yeah, that's what happens when you sit the zone. You can nail three-pointers. Back down to a one-point game. A minute 50 to go. 45-44. Huskies holding on to it. Coach Cottrell sends the play in in the half-court set to Evans. Evans sends it to his teammates. Davis pops out, gets it back to Evans, right angle. They want to go inside, but nothing doing down there. Russell on the dribble, going to take it Good to the baseline, move. pull up, pop, short. Rebound fall for by Davis. He's going to knock it out of bounds. Good hustle by Marcus Davis, but he couldn't save it. Yeah, great hustle right there by Davis, and a really good move there by Tyler Russell. Sometimes in a situation like that, I know he's feeling pretty confident after nailing that three, but you can fake that shot and look down low and see if you can't get an easy bucket underneath. 45-44, HBU with the lead. Huskies on defense right now. Pepperdine has the basketball. Jordan Baker bounce pass into Stacey Davis off glass and up and in for two. Pepperdine recaptures the lead by one. 46-45, under a minute to go now. Joyce, high post. Back to the basket, leaves it for Russell. Russell to Evans. Evans in the corner to Davis. Davis hasn't been heard from a lot offensively tonight. Been playing a big part on the boards, though. Down to 10 seconds. Game clock under 40. Bernardi with five on the shot clock. going to put it up. It's off target, and the rebound pulled down by Pepperdine, and... No shot clock, and Russell has to foul Jackson, and they'll send him to the line. Yeah, tough situation right there. I don't think that's the shot that Houston Baptist wanted with the shot clock going down. They had to commit the foul here just to set themselves up with an opportunity for perhaps a final shot. Well, and, and they're going to talk it over here. Coach Cottrell calls his team to him. We got a... 32nd timeout here at Sharp Gym. And of course, naturally, Pepperdine's going to put the ball in the hands of Lauren Jackson in this situation, and you have to foul a pretty good free throw shooter when he's got the basketball. Yeah, Lauren Jackson, he's so athletic. The way he can move around, he can penetrate really well into the paint, and that's what you have to watch out for. That can put him right back out on the free throw line. You have to also think, okay, who are your possible three-point shooters for Houston Baptist in this situation? If you're down by three points and the clock is winding down, you know, some of the percentages that kind of jump out at you, uh, immediately right off the top, you got to think about Tyler Russell because he actually just hit a three-pointer, but he's only shooting 28%. We'll give him 29 if you, if you calculate it up. But uh, Marcel Smith with uh, 50%. James Harper, 40%. Jonathan Evans, 40%. So, be interested to see what happens. Harper's not on the floor now. You would expect that he will check back in, though, before the time runs out here. Jackson at the line, critical free throws. And he's short. Rebound. It's tipped out. And it's going to be Pepperdine basketball. Yeah, it appeared to just roll right off the leg of one of the Houston Baptist players. Let's just see real quick as we follow up. Yeah, Bernardi number four there. The ball just kind of squirts off his leg. That's what it looks like. Good call. Not yeah, if I don't see Jar uh, Charles Bakersi jumping up and down right there, then I know it was a good call. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He, he didn't get any argument from the, from the baseline. Not a popular call, we'll add that here, but the officials have had uh, a tough job tonight here. Still a one-point game, just under 25 seconds, 24.5 to go. There you see some of the 
Huskies faithful who would like to see their team pull off a big defensive stand here now. I don't think there's any question that Coach uh, Ron Cottrell is right now talking to his team and saying, look, we were in the same position just a second ago. Let's not panic. See what happens. Willis trying to get the ball inbound. He'll get it into Jackson, and they want him touching the ball. And the Huskies have to send him back to the line. Russell picks up his second. That's not an issue right now. It's still the one and one. Jackson missed the front end the last time, but the ball went out off of HBU. So maybe this time they can get him to do it again. But he says, no, I'll just go ahead and make the front end. And now Harper will check in. Cody Joyce will check out. They, of course, want Harper in there for his three-point ability, his long-distance shooting. Harper got kind of hot there, three of four so far, almost in the second half. We'll see what happens. Coach Cottrell might call a timeout here and diagram a play. Makes both free throws. It's a three-point game, and now the Huskies do want a timeout. 20 seconds, and it'll be Husky basketball at midcourt. And let's keep it right here. Ron Cottrell brings his team to him, and they will set up what could be the final play of the ball game here. Well, you need a three-pointer, but you also need to grab a rebound if you miss it. So, look for Bernardi, Marcel Smith, and uh, perhaps Tyler Russell to be the guy taking the shot. We'll see. But Marcus Davis, another one of those players that can get up high and get you a good rebound. And then, of course, no question about who they would like to get the ball to as uh, we'll, we'll see how this kind of plays out. But... Uh, when you look at the stats, I mean, James Harper, three or four for the field. You know, he's been playing pretty well in the second half. We'll see if he gets the opportunity. Harper's going to be out there. Russell, who, as you mentioned, just made a three a short time ago. John Evans is back out there. He'll dial it up from long distance. Marcus Davis, Art Bernardi, none of these guys are afraid to put it up from beyond the arc. Harper 40%, four of 10 from behind the three-point line so far this season, at least coming into this game. Davis will inbound the basketball. And Harper Two. is 0 for 1 tonight. Evans goes to Bernardi. Down to 15 seconds left in the game. Davis into the corner to Bernardi. A three off the iron, won't go. Davis with the board. Kicks it out to Evans. Evans down to seven. They've got time to set it up. Davis is going to pop from three, and he hits. Ties the ball game with three seconds to go. Baker quickly up the floor. The shot won't go. We've got overtime. You called it. You knew we were going overtime. <laughs> yeah, no question. Marcus Davis has been kind of cooled off all night, and then lo and behold, he puts up a three-pointer. Look at the shot. This is an NBA. Range three, and it is nothing but net right there. Fantastic shot. That was not an earthquake here in Houston, folks. It was simply just mass <laughs> hysteria. <laughs> that was just his second made field goal of the night. He was 0 4 from the line. We got a timeout. We're headed to overtime. Let's take the break and gear up for the OT when we come back on the Legacy Sports Network. Nestled in the comfort of the Texas Gulf Coast, Deer Park, Texas continues to prove while the birthplace of Texas is on everyone's mind. Voted Best Affordable Suburb by the Bloomberg Business Week, Deer Park is home to many businesses and continues to grow in population and industry. With its close proximity to the Houston Ship Channel, Deer Park is home to many industrial leaders like Dow and Shell. Voted in the top 10 most affordable places to live by CNN Money, Deer Park lures many new residents year-round. These residents enjoy the comforts of many retail outlets, recreational locations, and historic sites like the Battleship Texas and San Jacinto Monument. And with a recognized school district that boasts award-winning athletic, culinary, and journalism programs, Deer Park continues to gain the attention of people nationwide. Come see what everyone's talking about and make your next visit to Texas a rebirthing experience in the birthplace of Texas. Don't worry, boots and jeans are optional. Work, stay, play, explore. That's Deer Park, Texas. 
uniquely you. 48-48. Right back where we started. 40 basketball minutes ago, and we got five more to play. Yeah, so they put five minutes on the clock. Both teams in the bonus. Yeah, drink some water right now. It's time to get your popcorn ready. <laughs> Well, Art Bernardi's, I thought he was going to have a wardrobe change right out there at the mid-court circle, but he pulls the shorts back up. They'll re-jump it now. Dawson Womack against Jet Range. We saw this at the outset of the game. Range won the opening tip. Ryan McDaniel ready to toss it up again. He's trying to... Clear out the circle now. Five minutes of overtime. 48-48. Here we go. And the tip is controlled as it was to open this game by Pepperdine. And Caleb Willis will walk it up. Evans, Russell, Bernardi, Womack, and Davis. A five on the floor for the Huskies. Here's Reigns from the baseline. Wide open from about 10 feet, and he's got the nice little floater for two. 50 to 48. Pepperdine takes the first lead of the OT. Reigns with 10 points, but most of those coming in the first half. Evans finds Davis. We'll see if that three heated him up. Here's Womack. Quick trigger. I'm not sure that's the shot that the Huskies wanted from him. And the rebound comes off to Pepperdine. Willis goes to Jackson. Jackson high post to Davis. Davis turns to the basket. Now he's going to dribble left to right. Leaves it for Baker. Baker on the weave to Willis. Willis picked up out there by Russell. Gets a pick from Davis. Through the paint on the baseline. Finds Reigns blocked from behind by Davis. And they're going to say Davis was on the baseline with possession of the basketball. It's going to be out of bounds off of HBU. What an athletic block by Davis. Look at this play. Nice pass underneath. Davis not fooled. All ball right there. Perfect job. And in the traffic, he came up with the loose ball, but he was on the baseline and out of bounds, and he knocks this one up into the stands. He's pumped up after hitting that three-pointer. Up being the operative word. <laughs> <laughs> Willis on the baseline gets it in to Jackson. Out top they go to Baker. Set up the half court. Huskies back in that zone. Willis with the dribble way out top. Goes cross court, Ooh, and pass. Baker has it stolen by Womack. Womack leaves it for Evans, and here come the Huskies. And unforced error there by Pepperdine. Womack with 14 rebounds. That's why he's on that floor tonight. He's earned that spot tonight because of his rebounding. Bernardi out high, leaves it for Davis. Davis to Evans. Wants to look inside, wanted to bounce pass in to Bernardi, but again, the quickness with the hands and feet. That one was kicked away out of bounds off of Willis. It'll stay in possession of HBU. Huskies down two, 3.08 to play in case you're just joining us. A big three-pointer by Marcus Davis to end it in regulation, go to overtime. Huskies trying to tie it back up now. Evans in the corner to Russell. Thought about the three, pulls up, pops from inside the arc. Shot won't go, the rebound down to Jackson. On the run, he's got numbers, two on one. Reigns lays it up and in for two, and the lead's out to four. Yeah, good little fast break there. Reigns kind of coming back a little gimpy on that leg. Kind of grimacing in pain there, too, but four-point lead for Pepperdine. Davis to the baseline, tries a cross-court pass. Pepperdine keeps getting those hands up and breaking up the passing lane. Now, Reigns looks a little shaken up there. He's kind of hobbling around. We'll see if maybe he doesn't get a substitute in. Let's see. Marcel Smith's going to check back in for HBU. So the starting five are back out there for the Huskies. As we have two minutes and 35 seconds to go 
in OT. It's gut think, check time now. I think Darren George, our lead official, thought what you were thinking. He went over there to ask Reigns if he was okay, and <laughs> Reigns gave him the thumbs up. Smith dribbles through, and he's going to be fouled by Lauren Jackson. Jackson will pick up his fourth. Yeah. It's all out now, though, but overtime. Lauren Jackson's so quick. I tell you, when he does foul, it always seems like uh, he's got this look on his face like, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm pretty fast here. Don't forget. I'm quicker than the, uh, the eyes can see. <laughs> Marcel Smith at the free throw line. He was two of two before that one. That's his first miss of the, miss of the season. Averaging six and a half a game. And that's one more free throw to come. It's the second one, and now it's back down to three. 52 to 49. HVU needs a good defensive stand right here. They're playing man-to-man -man now. Willis goes across to Baker, back out top to Willis. Fans want some defense, and the Huskies in that 2-3 zone trying to supply it. Jackson, high post goes to Stacy Davis, cross court. Baker is open for three, rattles out, and the rebound is going to be off of Bernardi. Well, he tried to control it, had the inside position, but couldn't hang on to it, and it rolls out off of Big R2. Yeah, it seems like every loose ball has gone towards Pepperdine here in this game. The ball all over the rim, and Bernardi doing a nice job, and it looks like it came right off his knee, so good call. Fans down underneath the basket thought Jackson might have picked up his fifth foul there, but no whistle. And Pepperdine with the basketball. Work it to the left side. Now Willis swings it around. Right side mm. angle for Jackson, and he hits from three-point land. And the lead is out to six now, 49 or 55-49. Davis with a quick trigger, can't get the three to go, and the rebound is tipped out. It's going to be a foul. Foul on Pepperdine. It's going to be on Baker, the second personal. So Davis putting up the three there, and perhaps HVU catching a little bit of a break. And uh, to the line right now, Dawson Lomack. Davis was couple of steps too close that time. He, he needs to back out to his range. <laughs> Dawson Womack with free throws. The first one off the mark. One more to come. Womack, the freshman from Milwaukee, played last year at North Cobb Christian in the Atlanta area. Two of seven from the free throw line this season. The free throw is good. One out of two, it's down to five, 55 to 50 now. 93 seconds left to go. Obviously both teams in the bonus, might have to have foul here pretty soon. Willis, Marcel Smith trying to get the steal as they go to the half court press. Russell lets Jackson go by. They really don't want to foul him if they don't have to, but Davis will take it back out on top. Now might not be a bad time to foul, but they get it back in the hands of Jackson. Russell reaches in, thought he got the ball, but they're going to call him for the foul. Yeah, it's Tyler Russell's third foul. That's going to put the hot shooting Jackson on the free throw line. Jackson 7 of 9 at the line tonight. Misses the first one, though, and the rebound comes off to the Huskies. Marcus Davis with the board. Marcel Smith wants to go inside. Bernardi looks for help. Now he's going to take it to the baseline. Puts it up and in for two. Hard-earned two points right there by Bernardi. Down to three again. Now it appears that... Obviously, HBU going to more of a man and putting a little half-court press on. Baker on the dribble is going to take it right down through the heart of the paint. He's called for an offensive foul. Baker cleared out with the offhand. And the officials call it. Watch it again. 
Yeah, let's see what happens right here. Just right. Kind of gets the elbow a little bit in the way. Might have happened right before that play. Yeah. Or before the actual, the final player that fell to the floor. Well, now down to 36 seconds, and as they get it across the half-court line, Ron Cottrell wants to talk about it. And so very similar situation to the end of regulation time. And do we have another five minutes in us here? Yeah, you drop the play and crash the boards and see what happens. Huskies led at the half, 26-25. Pepperdine outscored them in the second half, 23-22. And now Pepperdine has outscored them by three here so far in the overtime period. It has been 7-4 to four in the extra time. And the Huskies now trying to draw up a play to to bring it back even again. And I saw assistant coach Judd Kenny there talking with the officials. And sometimes the assistant coaches, they'll, they'll kind of get in the ear a little bit of the officials as well, let them know what they're seeing out there, and just kind of get some understanding on what the calls are so they can relay that message to their players. You know, Will Clark once told me, baseball player, obviously, uh, former Texas Ranger and San Francisco Giant, what they want is is consistency. They want right. to see, like, for example, in baseball, a consistent strike zone, or in basketball, consistent calls. That's what you're looking for. If you know what to expect, then you know you can play to that type of game. Right. Well, they'll look for that here in the final 36 ticks of the clock here in overtime. And Marcus Davis right next to us gets it inbound to Marcel Smith. Smith's going to pop from three-point land. Short rebound taken by Tyler Russell. Turn around, and now he kicks it back out to Smith. He's going to dribble down on the baseline, and he's going to be fouled on his way to the hole. Stops the clock with 24 seconds, and Marcel is slow to get up. Yeah, Marcel Smith showing some quickness right there. Watch as he takes the pass here. This is after he'd already taken the shot. He goes back up and down low into the rim area, down in the paint. Can't get it to go, but he's off to the free throw line. Reigns picked up his fourth foul. Now he, and Caleb Willis, and Lauren Jackson all have four. Now, that's not a problem right now. The only way that it could become a problem for Pepperdine is if we go to a second OT. First one rattles out for Marcel. Yeah, you want to make that first one. If you're going to miss one, miss the second one so you have a shot at the rebound and the three-point play. Husky still trail by three, 55-52. Second free throw goes down through. Ron Cottrell wants to talk about it. And this is a 30-second timeout. So they just want a, the opportunity to set up the defense here. And I think we might see a little full court press here. I definitely think so. Quick guard play, probably four guards out there. And then Bernardi back deep. It's been a good game, 55-53. Houston Baptist has had to kind of overcome poor shooting here in the second half. And they've tried to play better defense, which I think they have. But they shot 46% in the first half. In the second half, just 28%. Right now, Houston Baptist in a situation where if they don't get a steal right away, they may need to foul. Well, and Pepperdine knowing that, has got Jackson coming back up the floor. And you got to expect that they're going to try to get the ball to him as quickly as they can. Marcel Smith has defensive coverage on him. You would think that his job is to deny Jackson the basketball. Here we go. And no, to Willis. Foul him. Yeah. And up the floor, here's Baker on the run into the corner. They go to Jackson, and somehow they managed to get the ball to Lauren Jackson before yeah. the foul was committed. There was a couple of foul opportunities maybe earlier in that play that might have worked out a little better, but we'll see. Two free throws can pretty much ice it here, but he's got to make it first. Pepperdine by two. Jackson's first free throw. Front iron, glass, and down through. One more to come, and this 
As you said, Jeff is a huge free throw right here. And it's off the mark. And what's the call? We've got a lane violation. Ouch. Yeah, that's on HBO too. Trying to get the number. I think they called it on Marcus Davis. Now wait, the officials are. Yeah, you don't want to give Jackson another free throw opportunity. Wow. Well, now they're ready to go. 17.4 seconds on the clock. And the second chance at the second free throw goes down through, and it's a four-point game now. So the Huskies will have to draw it up. It'll be interesting to see. I don't know if we've got a shot of that first attempt at the second free throw, but it'll be interesting to see if Davis got into the lane a split second too soon. You know that players are going to be geared up and they want to grab that rebound on the missed shot, but Davis was on the offside of the ball. And yeah, and it's just very uh, inopportune time to have a lane violation. I mean, you get the missed free throw just what you want, and you hear the whistle get blown immediately, and you know what that means. Somebody's in the lane. Yep. You just can't pick up a foul that quickly. Right. Well, so what do you draw up here now if you're Ron well, Cottrell? You know what? You don't even have to take a three-point shot, so you can think of it that way. You take the two-point shot. If you've got it, then you need to foul right away. But, but if you make a basket real quick here, you got to foul somebody other than Lawrence Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> well, he missed one. <laughs> Just had a lane violation, though. <laughs> Smith brings it up the floor. Clogged down to 13. Huskies don't have a lot of time. They yeah, need they to need hurry to it up. Bernardi's right going to take it strong to the hole. He won't get it to go. The rebound is tipped, and it's going to be controlled by Pepperdine, and that's going to just about do it. Stacy Davis is fouled on the rebound, and he will go to the other end of the floor. And with just under three seconds to go, Pepperdine looks like they're going to come into Sharp Gym and perhaps escape with a win here. Yeah, it's a tough break right there. HBU played good basketball, had that three-pointer in regulation to tie it up and send it to overtime, but just overall, really since the second half began, have not shot as well as they need to. And you saw a little bit of that in Hawaii as well. Yeah, they did, and uh, I think it's something that, that Coach Cottrell knows is probably going to be a work in progress for this team. Harper grabs the rebound. Smith dribbles it up the floor, but too little, too late, and that's the ball game. Final score in overtime tonight. Pepperdine 57, HBU 53. We'll take a quick break here and come back and put a wrap on this one from Sharp Jim as the Huskies fall to 3-2 and two on the young season. Nestled in the comfort of the Texas Gulf Coast, Deer Park, Texas continues to prove while the birthplace of Texas is on everyone's mind. Voted Best Affordable Suburb by the Bloomberg Business Week, Deer Park is home to many businesses and continues to grow in population and industry. With its close proximity to the Houston Ship Channel, Deer Park is home to many industrial leaders like Dow and Shell. Voted in the top 10 most affordable places to live by CNN Money, Deer Park lures many new residents year-round. These residents enjoy the comforts of many retail outlets, recreational locations, and historic sites like the Battleship Texas and San Jacinto Monument. And with a recognized school district that boasts award-winning athletic, culinary, and journalism programs, Deer Park continues to gain the attention of people nationwide. Come see what everyone's talking about and make your next visit to Texas a rebirthing experience in the birthplace of Texas. Don't worry, boots and jeans are optional. Work, stay, play, explore. That's Deer Park, Texas, uniquely you.
Lone Star College opens doors for nearly 50,000 students. And we're ready to open doors for you, too. Register now on campus or online. CBO, cheddar, bacon, onion. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. Say hello to McDonald's new Tremendous. CBO. Smooth cheddar, crispy bacon, grilled onions on the Angus Third Pounder or premium chicken sandwiches. CBO. The simple joy of Tremendous. Yeah. How about an ale? Bigger. No, 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 bigger still. Ah, it's good to be king. This fall, experience king-size dining, shopping, merriment, and more at the Texas Renaissance Festival. Discount tickets are on sale now at Randall's, Walgreens, Wood Forest National Bank, and online at texrenfest.com. The Texas Renaissance Festival. Choose your own adventure. College football returns to Reliance Stadium as the Big 12 faces off against the Big 10 at the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas, Friday, December 28th. Bring your family and friends to experience the passion, pageantry, and football tradition that can only be seen in the Lone Star State. For more information, go online to Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas.com or call 832-667-2390. We'll see you in December for a football celebration as big as Texas. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Welcome back to Sharp Gym here on the campus of Houston Baptist University. Putting the final touches tonight on an exciting game, but a loss here at home for the HBU Huskies. The final score tonight, 57-53 in overtime. Everything we could have wanted in a competitive game, Jeff, just didn't fall the way of the Huskies tonight. A lot of loose balls went the way of Pepperdine tonight. Lauren Jackson, of course, was 17 points to lead the way. We knew Lojack was going to get his points. He was kind of held in check in that first half, but he came on pretty strong in the second half. And really, I think what it comes down to is poor shooting for HBU in the second half and in overtime. Their defense played pretty well. I mean, if you would have told me going into this game that it would have been this low of a scoring game, I would have said, hey, possible victory there for HBU, but instead, the board shooting ends up hurting Houston Baptist in the end. Did a good job on the boards tonight. And as you said, uh, it was just the inability when they had those opportunities to connect from the floor. Right. I mean, Art Bernardi did his part. 14 points, was really solid, but kind of got in foul trouble early on. And they needed some of the other players to step up. And for the most part, they did do that. I like what I saw in the zone defense that seemed to work, especially late in the game in the second half. But uh, in the end, just too much low jack, and that ended up being the story. Uh, he made some key free throws, and the lane violation was really crucial. It took HBU right out of any possibility of getting a three-point play late because the lane violation was on a miss, and then lo and behold, Pepperdine gets another free throw. They make it a four-point game, and the rest is history. Yeah, and sometimes that's just the way the ball falls or bounces in this game, and it winds up a four-point defeat tonight for the HBU Huskies. Huskies go on the road now, head up to uh, Charleston, Illinois. So they've got a couple on the road before they come back home. Still very early in the season and still a lot of growth potential for this team. Yeah, a chance not only to play Eastern Illinois on the road, but then they'll have a road game at Rice, which of course is kind of a home game seeing that it's in Houston. A chance to kind of show everybody what they've got and a chance to find out what they're really made of. You know, at this time of year, you're starting to figure out what rotations work, what doesn't work and you continue to build and the chance you know, to go home for the holidays for a few days too is probably a good break for the guys. I'm sure they've been working pretty hard and even being in Hawaii, you got to see them up close and personal. It's still hard work out there. You play a lot of games. Hey, we worked every day. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking there to you it. Go. What happens in Hawaii stays in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> well, the final again, 57-53. Pepperdine comes in 
And on the road, they pick up a win over the HBU Huskies tonight. That's going to wrap it up from Sharp Jim here. For Jeff Power, I'm Lonnie King. For everybody that brought you this one, we thank you for being a part of the broadcast tonight. And we'll see you down the road on HBU Basketball, powered by the Legacy Sports Network.